finally grab you, buddy. You were a busy man. Oh, my goodness. It's the kids. The kids make me do it. <laughs> yeah, before I even start any questions about mixed martial arts, I know how important your family is to you. And I'm a family man myself. I'm married, have children. And how many are part of your tribe besides your wife and I? How many of these little kids do you guys got? Uh, so I've got six kids. Holy crap, dude. The oldest one's what nine, the youngest is seven months. Oh, my gosh. And what are the uh, sports that they're playing for those all. that are sports eligible? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> like soccer, t-ball, yep. all that stuff. Soccer, <laughs> baseball, and they're all on separate teams for everything. Wrestling, oh. jiu-jitsu, kickboxing. Uh, they all play instruments, too. At least my three oldest do. Uh, That's a blessing, man. That is a blessing. You know, again, I have kids, and I... I've, I've done the whole thing. I don't have six. <laughs> six. So let me get to the meat of it. I don't only have you for a few minutes here. Okay. What is the upcoming schedule for you? What are your near future plans, you know, in terms of possibly fighting, whether it's going to be boxing or, you know, yeah. obviously, on, you know, social media, we see you, you're, you're kind of making some different you know proclamations, but I want to hear from you directly. What, what's on tap? Yeah. So I've been offered two fights for a bare knuckle boxing organization over in Russia. One was on like, is 10 days notice for Christmas day. And I had said yes. And then they said no. Uh, and they offered it to me. And then I said, yes, this, I, I don't actually, they said they needed a 205 X UFC fighter. And I was all of that. And it was on short notice. Like I'm sure Russia is going to do to me. And I said, let's do it. Uh, next one was, I had a little more time and they said, well, okay, 85, we're going to put you at it. I said, Oh, I don't want to do it, but okay, I can do it. And uh, then they turned it down again. Uh, oh, yeah, they're scared. The, them Ruskies, they're scared of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, so I'm still looking. Today I, today I agreed I would be willing to do a bare-knuckle MMA fight. Uh, or if they wanted to set it up on a two-fight thing, like boxing and them, I'd be willing to do that. But it sounds like I'm going to be overseas uh, okay. doing it over there. Now, I have to ask, has the PFL come across your radar at all? I love the PFL. I really have. Uh, it's more, I don't want to go to them on the streak I'm on, uh, because when I win their tournament, I don't want them to say, oh, this guy's on a bad streak, and then, you know, he went. I When I win their tournament, I want to have a lot of green on my topology prior to, you know, dominating their tournament. Gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. So we're going to see you possibly fight again. That's the first bit of news that I want to qualify. We're going to see you fight again. You're, you're, you're still training. You're actively training and, and you're preparing as if you're going to fight soon. So we're going to see you probably sometime at, at some point this year, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully sooner and later. Like I, I've, I've accepted two fights over the last two months. Uh, they, they just get, get yeah. there. So Thank I'm God in shape. <laughs> I'm lifting constantly. I'm a good size 205 or I feel. Maybe not a good size 205, but I'm bigger than I was, uh, stronger than I was. Uh, I'm hoping to fight at 205, but I can still make 85 if I need to. And uh, ho hopefully I'll get a couple fights this year. I, I just, I love the sport too much. I still, I walk into almost any room and I'm one of the better guys, if not the best guy in it. Um, so I know I've still got some power in my punch and some, some uh, you know, love and joy I want to spread. So UFC 284 is coming up this weekend. There's some good fights in the card. What are your thoughts on like, main event, co-main event, uh, who you like winning those fights? Uh, I desperately want Volkanovski to win. I, I want Volk to win. And it's funny, I'm not even a huge Volk fan. I like him. I tune into all his fights. They're super entertaining. He's just not one of the guys that I think of, you know, oh, I love Volk. But I want him to, I want these Dagestanis to quit taking my belts. <laughs> I want, I know, I know Volk isn't an American, but he's closer than the Dagestanis are. <laughs> so I, I want him to win. I, if he wins, he might, up, like, I've got GSP as the greatest I've ever been. GSP, he's just incredible. If Volk wins this belt, Volk will be hard to argue with. Yeah, no, it, it, there's a there's a good chance if he wins, he just I mean, he's already at that point where he's on the cusp of being one of the best ever mm -hmm. pound for pound, all those kind of conversations. But this win would be incredible. Now, what about Komen event? Yair is fighting against um, J Josh Emmett, right? Uh, yeah, you... I didn't realize it was a, a, a interim belt, uh, which is it's kind of strange. I mean, I, I feel yeah. like Aljo didn't fight that long ago. Um, yeah, but I, I know the UFC. I mean, all, all these organizations they want the belt on the line, a belt that sells fights and all that. But I, you know, Islam came out and said they're not selling this card very well. 
I didn't know the co-main event was a title fight until earlier today. Um, <laughs> I, I did know about the Volk fight. I've been, I mean, and maybe that's what they've been doing. They've been saying Volk's fighting, you know, Islam. I knew about that, but I, I didn't know about the co-main event. Do you know anybody on the card enough to say, I know that guy, I train with that guy, I know enough about that guy that I'm rooting for him in some kind of a personal level? Uh, Parker Porter is fighting, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, he, he and I, we did some traveling over Europe for a military thing uh, here five, six months ago, and he, he's such a good dude. Uh, very talented. And for a heavyweight, he is nimble. Dude is flexible. He can yes. start through the flanks. He can dance well. And he's, I'm really pulling for him. Did you just say he could dance well? He he grooves. I'm telling you, <laughs> he, he grooves. No, let me. I, I want to harken back to that. You said a military thing. This is probably my last question for you before I let you go. I know you got a whole evening ahead of you, and probably dinner and all kind of stuff with a bunch yeah. of kids. But uh, what was the military thing? Can you talk about what you guys? Oh doing? yeah. So I I've been doing it for five or six years now. Is once maybe twice a year. Um, it's they call it the Crate Cage Crusaders. Um, and, and it's we go military base to military base uh, all over. I've been to the Middle East. I've been all over Europe. I've been Southern Europe, Western. I've been a little bit everywhere. Um, and I go military base to military base. We do seminars. It's usually me and a couple other UFC level fighters, uh, either past or present. And we just have a blast doing it. We get to roll with all these troops, people that haven't seen their family or America in, you know, months and months and months. Uh, I get to go over there and, and meet and greet with them and then bring a little, uh, American joy back with them. That is awesome. I, I never knew that about you. And I am, I'm going to find a way to promote that more because, that's just, you know, a, a different part of who you are as a person. That's very patriotic. It's, you know, it's it's good in every way. My last question for you, because that kind of is a segue, what is life going to be for you? What's going to be your day-to-day -day when you stop fighting? What do you want to do? Do you want to coach? Do you want to mentor? Do you want to get into politics? You got a good smile. You know, you oh, yeah. present yourself President, well. President, President Sam is coming. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I, may not, I may not be there just yet, but that, that is on the horizon. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you know what, I... Kind of everything I'm doing is I want, I really am interested in politics. I say jokingly, but it has been, you can ask my coach from, you know, the age of 17 on until now. I've always said I'm going to be president someday. And it started off as kind of a joke, but I've really, I, I am enthralled with politics. Um, so everything I do will kind of be leading me that way, but I don't want to be one of those politicians that have never done anything. So I will be starting my own business. I will be learning more outside of just fighting and, you know, I, I've had the I've had the hard jobs, the roofing and the tin work and I, the AC, and I've done that stuff. I would like to. I, I graduated college with my degree in business management and a minor in marketing, and I would like to apply some of my my intelligence, not just my bronze, to to you know producing for my family and take that you know one step further someday into the realm of the political junkies. I love it, Sam. It is so good having you. We are here with Sam Alvey, uh, MMA veteran, still obviously working the, the channels to get a new fight at some point this year. We appreciate your time, Sam. Thank you so much, buddy. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for wanting me on, sir. You're welcome. You have a great evening. All right, you too. All right, buddy. Take care. Well, that was the wonderful Mr. Sam Alvey. And uh, yeah, I've been trying to chase him down for a while. Nice dude. Ton of kids. And, uh, you know, when you have a bunch of kids, that in itself kind of just enthralls your whole world. So I really appreciate his time. Well, you're with us here for the pre-fight show for PFL Challenger Series number three. We're going to talk about that card right now. At some point tonight, we're also going to have another guest coming in here. Whenever that guest arrives, I'll just have to interrupt what I'm doing. And we'll have to just bring that person in, right? So tonight's the heavyweights. So PFL Challenger Series number three, this Friday night, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Orlando, Florida, four fights in the card. If you don't know much about Challenger Series, let me just educate you real quick. It's just like the Dana White Contender Series. You've got fighters basically vying for a spot in contract. The difference is there's only one contract in the line. So four fights, eight fighters, one contract. It's, yeah, kind of tough. It comes down to what they want, what they're looking for, who they think is the better fighter. All those different things come into circumstances. But tonight, we've got four good bouts. One of these heavyweights, heavyweights will get a contract. I think I have a bit of a lean towards Danilo Marquez in the main event. I believe he gets the contract tonight. And it's more so not because he wins the fight, but because of the pedigree. Look, we understand the PFL is a marketing machine. 
ESPN partner, on and on and on. They want to go ahead and sign fighters that are UFC leftovers, Bellator leftovers. It makes sense. It's part of the marketing model. Danilo Marquez is not a real heavyweight, but lucky for him, no one is in this card. <laughs> I want to talk about that. If you didn't see the weigh-ins, these guys were like 235, 245, 220 something. No one even got anywhere near 265. So all these guys are really just lightweights. I'm sorry, light heavyweights pawning off as heavyweights. It's hard to find heavyweights at the bottom line. So in the main event, Danilo Marquez, we like him to win, most likely via submission. That's really where his background is. He's Brazilian, good jiu-jitsu skills, so on and so on. Ross Hilton, his thing is super tall. Super tall guy, has a lot of length, decent striker from range. Not terrible at grappling, but grappling is just not as easy for him because obviously he's a very tall guy. It's kind of tough for him, right? Co-main event, Vitor Resende. Speaking of tall, this man is six foot nine. Mind you, Ross Hilton is six six, but six nine Resende, Brazilian, trading out of what ATT and Coconut Grove, whatever. Uh, good gym up against Isaiah Pinson, who's a late replacement. We like Pinson here to win the fight just because a lot of the late replacements have been winning. So just just go with the trend, okay? We're going with Pinson to win the fight, most likely into the distance. It's heavyweights. We like Pinson here for Vitor off for a while, long layoff, very tall, question marks, but very good gym. Moving on down, Abraham Babley, he fights tonight against Hassan Graham. Graham is the one with less experience. Abraham Babley fought last year in the PFL. He has a little experience under his belt. A wrestler, tends to slow pace down, not an exciting fighter. He won his fight last year by a decision, a slow decision. I, I recall the fans were kind of booing after the fight was over because they were not satisfied with the approach of both fighters. You get the uh, the 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 drift. And then first fight in the card is Alton Meeks versus Louis Sutherland. We like Alton Meeks to win, though we will, you know, say Louis Sutherland has a chance to win the fight as well. But we like Alton Meeks here. He's at minus 165, so it's pretty close to the money line. So our pace again tonight are going to be Alton Meeks, Abraham Babley, Isaiah Pinson, and Danilo Marquez. And with those picks, we have the dogs being Isaiah Pinson as a late replacement. Meeks is a close pick at minus 165. Abraham Babley is minus 340. Marquez minus 550. Let me look at our actual tip sheet. And now is a good time to plug our Substack newsletter. If you're not subscribed to our newsletter, subscribe to it. It's free. Arrives in your inbox. You get our picks, our full breakdowns in a written format. You can obviously come here and watch our video breakdowns too, but we have the written format for you in Substack newsletter. It's free, easy. No spam, nice and simple. So looking here at our actual tip sheet, here's the best that we have in already. Let's go to our straight bets first. Individual bets. Hilton to win at plus 325 for a quarter unit to win 0.81 units. My thinking is pretty simple. These are not natural heavyweights. And Marquez, he can slow down a bit. If you go back and watch his fight against Kennedy Ninjuku, He's winning that fight. He wins round one, wins round two, round three. Ah, hits a wall, slows down. Could that happen here? Who knows? I'll put 25 bucks up there to win 0.81 units. We'll give it a try. Graham to win at plus 280, another quarter unit to win 0 0.70 units. Again, thinking is simple as this. It's, it's PFL. A lot of these underdogs tend to win. It's low level. People make mistakes. It's plus money. <laughs> I love plus money. We have three parlays for you. Marquez to win at minus 425, Babley to win at minus 340, Meeks to win at minus 165. That gives us plus 157 odds. That's a quarter unit to win 0.39 units. Like that parlay. Point number two, Marquez to win again. So we're invested in Marquez. We like him quite a bit here down the parlays, even though we bet against him in the individual bets, right? So Marquez to win. Yair Rodriguez to win tomorrow night in UFC 284. Tough a fight, no distance. At minus 180. That gives us plus 205 odds. So Marquez is the only piece tonight that's part of that parlay that we're focused on. Marquez to win. The last parlay, badly to win, minus 340. And then for tomorrow, and we have two pieces on the other part of that, our part of tomorrow's card for USC 284, which is Bukakis, fight no distance, and Clayton to win at minus 325. Gives us plus 122 odds, a half unit to win, 0.61 units. We don't have a lot of exposure here, guys. PFL has been tough to even get betting spots on because they don't offer it right now for DraftKings and Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey area. We don't, just don't have it. 
So I'm just only betting money line spots on other books that I can get some action on. Um, so we have limited action in general here. In total, we have 1.50 units on the line to win 3.02. We're not going to win very much. We're not going to lose very much, but it is what it is just based upon our activity where we're at. Now, if you're in a state that actually offers PFL lines, I don't know if that's Florida or whatever else, you maybe have some more action in the fight. Um, and for you, hey, man, blessing to you. Our picks again to win and their version of how they're going to win. Danilo Marquez, by submission, is minus 115. That's our pick there in that fight. Isaiah Pinson to win into the distance is plus 340. That's how we like him to win. Abraham Badley to win by decision at plus 325. That's how we see him winning his fight. Then Alton Meeks to win his fight by a ground and pound TKO at some point. We don't have a line there, but that's how we see him winning the fight. So we've got about 10 minutes right now until the actual broadcast will start. What I want to do for you guys is actually put the link in there for you. So on FUBUSportsNetwork.com, that's where you're going to be able to watch fights tonight. I just put that there in the live chat. So FUBUSportsNetwork.com is where you can watch it. I'll do my best to actually stream it here too in like a sub screen with you guys so we can see it together. The only thing is, well, two things. Number one, I hope YouTube doesn't give me a hard time because I've already said before, it's I don't I'm not monetizing these videos, and I'm very clearly giving the the credit to Fubu Sports Network, and also this is PFL content. This is not content belonging to MA Fight Club. We're not monetizing this video, and so on and so on. But I'll do the best I can to go ahead and uh, bring in the stream of the actual fight, and this way we can kind of watch them together. And talk a bit now. If you're over on FUBU Sports Network.com, which I just put into the live chat there, you'll see they're playing fights right now. For example, it's Sorty versus Hendricks. That would be a fight from, I guess, maybe last year. It's definitely a fight from a while ago. They're just playing some older fights. But at nine o'clock in about 10 minutes, we'll actually start our live watch party with yours truly and Meg Larza. If you're here in the, in the chat or you're here live, leave some comments. Again, you're looking to watch the fight live. I put the comment there for you guys, fubusportsnetwork.com. If you're just joining in right now, Smiling Sam Alvey was here earlier. He kind of opened the show with me. He came in. We talked a little bit about his plans for 2023, his family, what's going on. He's always a funny character. Uh, so in a few moments now, we'll get going with the live watch party. The live watch party. All right, so... Any questions? If you're here, now's the time to ask me about fights tonight on this card that you may be interested in. I feel like so many people right now in the mixed martial arts world are just focused on tomorrow night because UFC 284 is like kind of taking the entire weekend. Um, oh, we got somebody making a comment up in here. Mr. Danny. Danny says, so it will be on the site. Yes. Yes, Danny. I'm going to go ahead and provide you guys with a stream of the actual fights right here. It'll be like on a large part of the screen over here. And then my little face will be over here. And I'll be talking to you guys through the fights. That's going to be the, the drill. As long as I can. Unless YouTube gives me a problem. It, it is free content, so I don't see what the issue is going to be. And uh, he says here, also going to talk on the Meeks line movement. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, What's that movement like? Hold on a second here. Maybe you're, you're tipping me off of something I wasn't aware of. Um, Let me see what that line movement looks like. Meeks, Meeks. Um, well, there wasn't a terrible amount of line movement, right? Well, it was, it was, it was significant. You're right. He went from minus 165 down to minus 125. He, here's the thing with Sutherland. He he's a bit of a, a bull and has um a way of weighing on you. And this could be the problem. You know, you just from a dynamic standpoint, if he's laying on top of Meeks, it just could be a problem. <laughs> and so I think that's where this is coming from. But other than that, I mean, I think Meeks is the more skilled guy. He's got some good wrestling, comes from a wrestling pedigree, you know, like grew up with a dad who was coaching him type of thing. And, you know, but you're right, Danny, I guess just because of his weight. But then again, look, I went to Twitter earlier and I posted this. I want to pull up my tweet, my tweet from Twitter earlier. I tweeted about the weights. And and it's not an indictment on the PFL at all. So I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. I'm not I'm not hating on the PFL. I love me some PFL. I'm here doing a live pre-fight show and watch party for the PFL, right? But the weights were 228 Meeks, 254 Sutherland, 
245 Babley, 250 Graham, 243 Resende, 235 Pinson, 235 Hilton, 247 Marquez. And in the case of Pinson, he weighed in at 235, and my man looked loose. Put it that way. The point is, and for all those who ever played some football, so if you played like some middle school football, high school football, like even if you didn't play at a high level, just any kind of football. And if you coach football, you definitely know what I'm talking about. One of the hardest people to find in terms of positions, it's not the quarterback. It's No, that's not the hardest person to find. It's the most important person to find in terms of winning football games at a high level or any championship level for any teams. It's the offensive linemen. They're so difficult to find. It's hard to find big boys who can move that are athletic. And the same goes for mixed martial arts. When I saw these weigh-ins for the PFL yesterday, I thought to myself, damn, you just don't got 265-pound men out there that are six foot four, that are agile, that are fighting for a living. They can go in there and do mixed martial arts. Some of them are playing basketball, some of them are playing football, or just some other, they're doing something else. They're not doing mixed martial arts, and they're hard to find. Because Meeks at 228, dude, you can just make light heavyweight. And that leads me to believe that most of the guys that are fighting tonight, most, not all, but most of them are basically told by the PFL, listen, we'd rather you come try out for the heavyweight division because we just, we've got a need there. We know you're underweight. Everyone's going to be underweight, but we have a bigger need there, like, Wink, wink. We'll, you know, we'll help you out. You help us out. Because Meeks could clearly make light heavyweight. So is the issue that the PFL already has a bunch of people in that area that they already, you know, they have what they want. They'd rather get more guys in this division. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. You know, just calling a spade a spade. So looking at these these athletes, you know, Hilton is a six foot six gargantuan Amazon of a man. Marquez is, I'm surprised he weighed 247. That actually got me because Marquez has had a light heavyweight background and he didn't look bad. He didn't look like overweight, but he's been fighting light, light heavyweight his entire career through UFC, whatever else. So seeing him at 247, I'm like, all right, my man put on some, some good muscle. He looked good. But yeah, we don't have a single natural heavyweight here. And Sutherland's like, what? Six foot, if you're nice about it, more like a 5'11 or you know, he's more of a stocky short guy. So, we got about four minutes to go, guys, before we start our live coverage or our live watch party for the PFL Challenger Series number three. Again, four fights tonight. You got Marquez versus Hilton, Resende, six foot nine, Resende from Brazil, fighting Pinson. You got Sutherland versus Meeks in the first fight in the card, and Babley versus Graham. Babley has two fights in the PFL already. He's 2-0 and in the PFL. That will obviously help him in his, you know, at least momentum tonight. Then again, he's already fought two fights in the PFL. They haven't signed him long term. It's like, you know, what are we doing? This fight card is indicative again. It's hard to find heavyweights. Is what it is, right? Again, if you want to watch the fights live tonight on your own, not here with us, that's okay too. You can catch that on FUBUSportsNetwork.com. That's FUBU spelled F-U-B-O, sportsnetwork.com. And if you're there watching now, I'm watching Sorty get beat up by Hendricks. But that fight was a light heavyweight fight from the regular season last year. Now's a good time to remind you guys, if you're here, please go ahead and like. Please subscribe and go ahead and look down below here in the description. You're going to see there's a link there for our Substack newsletter. Subscribe to that too, please. And so, yeah, that's a really good comment there. Change my camera. Tommy Enders writes in here, Babley is a 5'10 heavyweight. Now, important to also qualify. Babley weighs 245. And you look at his physique and his body, it's not bad. He doesn't look terrible. He looks like he's in, you know, it's all is good. But, man, at 5'10, dude, if, if you can carry that, that, that wrestling ability that you have, that power against the fence, to a lower weight class, I mean, man, I'm just saying, he would be a lot more effective, you know what I mean? All right, guys, I'm going to give you guys about three minutes to just, you know, I have, a, I have tape on my finger, by the way. We'll, we'll talk about that, what I did here. I didn't cut my finger, but my one of my dogs, I was running outside with him, and he chipped my nail. Anyway, you guys, about two minutes now to get your last beverages for the night, whatever shots, vodka, whatever you're drinking, wine, get it ready to go. 
And I'll be back with you guys in about two minutes now with the live broadcast right here, streaming with you guys, talking with you guys, having a good time. And we do have another special guest. If you're just joining us right now, go back and rewind. Sam Alvey, the one and only Sam Smiling Alvey was here to open the show with us. He's a he's a funny character. Oh, one more comment before I jump out for the quick break here. Anyone have link for Europe? Mr. Quali Hala Hala. However you say that name there, I got you, dude. Just stay tuned right here. I'll be streaming it right here for you on this channel. You'll see it right here in screen. If not, go back. And if you look on the live chat there, FUBUSportsNetwork.com. That's F-U-B-O SportsNetwork.com. I will be back with you guys in just a moment. While I step out, if you don't mind, I'll put on some tunes for us so we're just not sitting here in deaf space. And I'll be right back with you guys. Everyone stay stay put. Don't leave. I'm just going to get the broadcast up just to take me a second, okay? And uh, so right now we are watching the stream here from the FUBUSportsNetwork.com website. If you want to watch that on your own, the link's right down there below. That's F-U-B-O SportsNetwork.com. That's where you can actually catch this entire live show tonight. I'll be playing for you what we have here available for you guys with the no sound. I'll be talking to you guys through the fights. And when we, have, when we have a guest coming through, they'll just be joining us. And obviously, we'll be talking with you guys as well. But again, I want to make sure I'm clear. This is the product of this FUBU Sports Network.com. This is not paid rights material of Mixed Martial Arts Fight Club. We are just broadcasting this as part of our live watch party. And if you want to watch, watch this live, you can watch it live on FUBU Sports Network.com. Absolutely 100% for free. For those of you that are joining us right now in the live watch party, you're welcome to make some comments, suggestions. I'll do the best I can to answer anything that I can for you. We'll talk you through the fights. We'll give you guys some updates as, as things are going along. And I welcome you back. I want to know what you guys are thinking. I want to know if you guys have any money in the line. Do you have any fighters you like more than other fighters? I'm really curious about the celebrity guests tonight. How will they respond? Will they be you know, uh, fair? Will they be, I don't know, will they be... Will it be controversial? <laughs> I thought the first two weeks I came away a little bit. I was disappointed. Disappointed that you ended up having a fighters who, who had get contracts or had finishes, didn't get contracts. And here we are with fighters who had decision wins getting contracts. You know, so the long and short of it is I feel like here we are in week number three, right? Week three heavyweights. Hopefully they can clean things up a little bit. Hopefully we can get ourselves a situation where the fighter that's performing the best gets a finish, also gets the contract. And I have to imagine with heavyweights, it's going to have to be a finish, right? We've got some characters tonight. We've got some guys with some interesting backgrounds and 
ultimately, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be PFL, man. The voting system. How do you guys feel about the voting system? This one is I, I'm very curious about. They're talking about it now. Like, what is the voting system? And there it is. You have celebrity votes. That's one factor. Then you've got the the fan vote. That's one factor. And if they're both on the same page, they both vote for the same fighter, that fighter can contract. If they contradict each other, no, no good. Now it goes to the CEO. He makes a decision. Ray Cepho steps in and decides who gets the contract. That's happened in the first two weeks. And quite frankly, I appreciate the attempt by the PFL to try to do their best version of the Dana White Contender Series and have the big boss coming in and making decisions. Issue becomes, again, you're talking about, you know, it's it seems like a, a little bit of a flawed process. Again, if you're coming through and watching right now this live watch party, we're just showing what's available right now on FUBUSportsNetwork.com. That is free. It's available to everyone. If you go over there and log in, not log in, I'm sorry, that's available for free. You don't have to log in. They'll pay for nothing. And so we're broadcasting it over here as part of our, our live watch party because it's free content and it's not our content. We're not monetizing this video. So just make sure YouTube hears, hears us. <laughs> that's our, our copyright, uh, I, I guess, validation there. We're not monetizing this video. We're just showing you what we're watching tonight, which is the PFL Challenger Series week number three live on fubu sports network.com so if you want to leave our live watch party go over there i understand if you want to stay here with us and be cool you can do that as well all right so on this fight card it is our belief based upon our thorough analysis speaking of analysis subscribe to our Substack newsletter the links down below full write-ups full breakdown links to our video breakdowns that's all available comes to you every week like monday tuesday nine o'clock in the morning right to your inbox no spam. Look down below. So right now on the PFL show, you've got Kurt Angle, Vitor Belafort, and Frank Mir. They're now appearing on screen. These are the live celebrity guests that will be uh, doing the show tonight with them. Now, Kurt Angle is not on location. He's at another location. He's actually in some kind of an office room. His eyes are freaky, They're like the aqua, light aqua blue. He's got a... <laughs> A cardboard image of himself behind himself. I don't know. You know, he's kind of a character. In any case, um, Kurt Angle's here. Vitor Belafort is here. And Frank Mir. And they're here as a celebrity panel. And their job is to evaluate the fights. After the fights are over, they will give their analysis on who they believe should get the contract. And so this week is all heavyweights. One of them is going to get a contract. They move into the heavyweight division. Last year, who won the heavyweight division last year in the PFL? I should know that off the top of my head. I don't. But whoever that person is will now be gaining a new person into the division and someone they might be fighting up against. But I need feedback here. We got 16 people that are watching live. Jump into the chat. I want your feedback. Who do you like to win? Let's start with the first fight in the card. Who do you guys like in the first fight of the card? Do you like Meeks? No. you like Sutherland? Why? Are you in Florida? Are you watching the fight maybe uh, on FUBU Sports Network on a live television and also have us on a subscreen? What's your setup? I want to know. What are you drinking? What are you eating? Who are you hanging out with? These are my questions. <laughs> I have questions for you. <laughs> but on a serious note, if you're new here to our channel, we do live pre-fight watch party stuff for Invicta and PFL, breakdowns for all the major cards like Bellator and UFC. And then, of course, our subtech newsletter has all that stuff in a written format. So subscribe to that. All right, so I'm watching this show. For those who are not able to watch the show that are listening to us from some sort of device, we just have a pre-fight show where, you know, Vitor Belafort and some of the other guest panel judges are talking to all the fighters in general, just like giving them some feedback. By the way, Frank Mir put on a, li a little bit of weight. My man got a little, a little plumpy. He's, he's not fat. I'm not saying Frank Mir is fat, but definitely got, got thick. And then Vitor Belafort's got the whole you know, clean suit thing. I'm, you know, I'm that, you know, GQ type of guy thing going. It's all good. I see you. I see you. So again, the gentleman who, who responded there last time. Um, yeah, that, that link there, did that work for you? The link that I posted right here. If you go to FUBU sports network.com, you can see the entire broadcast as you see it here. You get the sound though. You could watch it live. You could leave this party if you need to do your own thing on a laptop, whatever device. But that's available for you guys to watch. 
right now for free. So now Ian Parker is talking. He usually gives the like betting tips for the night. Um, just kind of gives like, you know, spots that he feels good about. Which, by the way, did you guys notice that Gianni the Greek is like nowhere to be found now for ESPN stuff? And one more little comment on that. I follow Gianni the Greek on Twitter, like most people do in the mixed martial arts world. And he um like he was posting something like, I'm looking for more work. I I, you know, kind of whatever. Not not saying he was laid off, just like I don't know. I think ESPN severed ties with Gianni the Greek. And remember what happened, like the last year or so, his last run was rough, right? He was just <laughs> like the picks were rough and people were just like going at him on Twitter. And now he's like, yeah, he's not on the network anymore. So, yeah, I'm going to say. So, yeah, first fight will be Louis Sutherland versus Alton Meeks. They're taking forever to get going with the fights. Not really sure why. A little curious here. But for some reason, they are taking their sweet old time. Doing a very long intro. Oh, yeah. They're showing the Bud Light thing. Have you guys seen this Bud Light thing? What this is? This is like their post-fight celebration station. I just said that on the fly, kind of rhymes. Celebration station, where basically the fighter who has won the contract will go over to this Bud Light chest, open this massive chest, they'll pull out some Bud Lights, and they'll drink them like two at a time, like doing this kind of thing, which looks very, yeah. They're doing double fisting of the drinking, and then they're pouring it on themselves, probably pouring more of it on themselves and on the floor than they are actually consuming it. And, and the ultimate. Bud Light Station Celebration. And uh, it's cool. I mean, listen. Did you guys... <laughs> we, we did a show recently about UFC's new partnership with Prime, the, the drink, right? And man, let me tell you something. When I when I, when I I realized, because I didn't, you, know, you don't realize stuff sometimes. It just takes a moment to tap, you know, get in your head. But when I realized that the UFC literally, like literally UFC has a, a sponsor for almost every type of damn beverage. I'm not kidding, dude. Like they have a vodka sponsor, vodka. They have like a, a, a scotch or whiskey sponsor, tequila sponsor. Like uh, Monster is their hydration water thing. They literally have a specific like, beverage sponsor for each type of, of, of beverage. Like they'd have an orange, I don't know if they have an orange juice sponsor, but if they did they'd have an orange juice, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, it's incredible. All right, so we're now looking to get some of these fights going, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Sutherland is now in the octagon looking quite swollen. And again, for those who want to watch this, it is live over on FUBU Sports Network.com. I know I'm going to lose some traffic for that, but you know what? Hey, we're just here to service the people. You want to go listen to the broadcast? I get it. You can stay here listen to my fine, sexy, young voice. JK. So both guys are in their late 20s, 29, 28. You got two guys that are both six foot three, not the tallest heavyweights. Though I do believe that Sutherland's not six foot three. And so, yeah, you see Meeks is a little bit taller than him. Meeks comes out in a southpaw stance. That's the first thing I noticed about Meeks. And then, of course, Meeks is a little bit on the trimmer side. I mean, quite frankly, probably could make a lightweight uh, weight if he needed to. Sutherland's a little bit more on the meaty side, and you know, not the not. Oh wow! So Meeks looked like he was kind of hurt for a second, but then he dives in, gets a double leg takedown, and Sutherland gets right back up, and then Meeks returns him back to the mat. And I tell you what, I'll be honest with you. At first, it looked like possibly Sutherland had hit Meeks, and Meeks was like kind of going down, like he was hurt. And next thing you know, Meeks explodes with a double-A takedown. Meeks is now still on top with four minutes and 15 seconds to go here in round number one. Now, the first question you want to ask yourself here is, who is better on the ground? Who has the better history on the ground? I actually would lean towards Sutherland a little bit, especially in a top position, right? Because you're in top position, now you have a position to control the guy below you. In the case of Sutherland, he's also got the, the weight aspect, right? He's the heavier guy, big-chested, Mr. Big Chest. Right now, Meeks is on top of him, so we have what we call like a, 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 a physics issue, right? From a physics standpoint, it's harder for Mr. Meeks to actually get back up, right? So watching the fight here live, Meeks is still now in top position, been there for a little over a minute, 
We're about three and a half minutes to go in round number one. And now Sullivan's doing a good job of trying to get himself back into at least back to his feet. Did a good job. He's back to his feet, but now still, you know, give it back. But oh, wow. Meeks brought him back down again. Wow. Meeks is definitely, let me tell you something. Meeks is not nearly as heavy as Sullivan. You can see that. And he's like trying to stay on the back of Sullivan, but he's at least giving him a hard time. He brought him back down once and brought him back down for the third time now. It's twice, three times. So Meeks, what he lacks in size, He's making up for in skill, volume, pressure. He's still in the back here of Sullivan. With three minutes to go, though, in round one, a lot of time, and Meeks needs to be careful. He doesn't overdo it, right? Get himself a little bit too tired. He's now on the back of, of Sullivan, but on the back halfway. No hooks are in. Doesn't have full control. With Sullivan, he's got one hand on the ground, kind of on one knee, not really doing much, kind of just, I wouldn't say surviving. That's the wrong way of putting it, but just trying to get back out of the situation here, get back to his feet. From a grappling standpoint, you love what Meeks is doing. The question becomes, dude, can you sustain this? Like, this is going to be a high pace to kind of keep going with. You got a guy underneath of him who, if he gets on top of Meeks, how can Meeks get back up? You know, so I, I love what I'm seeing from the standpoint. I predicted Meeks would win the fight, but I'm a little concerned just simply about gas tank. That's my only issue. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go here in round number one. We're in a bit of a stalemate. Meeks is still hanging on to the back. With something grounded like in a, in a Tebow position, one hand down, one knee down, kind of against the cage, and Meeks is just riding him. I'll tell you what, Meeks has a wrestling background, and you can tell, dude. He's undersized, but his technique is winning the day, and you see that. Nice knees now. So Meeks is just kneeing the ass, basically, of Sutherland. Sutherland's in a, you know, a grounded position, one knee. Oh, back up. So that's a good move by Sutherland. Got back to his feet. He's against the cage. We're separated. Oh, no. Meeks has got a leg, a single leg, and he's not letting it go. Well, Meeks is trying to wrestle. He is not trying to do anything else but wrestle. Needs to be careful, though, because now Sullivan got a nice knee in there. All right, we're back out now at distance now with a minute and a half to go. We're finally at range here. Sullivan's got to be happy with this now. He was getting eaten up there from on the ground. Both guys have slowed down considerably. And with Meeks, you know, he's got to be careful out here because the one thing Sullivan does, he throws with heat, right? And he's doing it now. Let's only just landed a few good shots there, but he's tired too. Oof, fatigue is a mother, especially with heavyweights, right? They just, they hit a wall. So right now, whatever happened the first, let's say, four minutes of round one, everything has just hit a complete wall. Both guys are tired. We're seeing one punch at a time. We're about 45 seconds to go here in round number one, and literally it's just one punch at a time. And with Meeks, he needs to be really careful. He took a few hard knees already. Took a few like hard punches. He looks like he's not hurt, but body language is an issue. You know what I mean? And I also see Sullivan definitely kind of coming forward now a little bit more. He threw a few hard kicks, threw a few hard punches. I still give the round to Meeks so far, but Meeks is exhausted. Wow, you could see it. Like he's stumbling, looking at the clock, 20 seconds to go, hands are down. He's fainting, but he's really just trying to get space and time because he's tired. He wants no more part of this. So fit. So what that was weird. Meeks just kind of like went down in a weird way. Woo wee. I'll tell you what, if you could bet this fight live, you you might want to bet on Sullivan because Meeks looks absolutely exhausted. So looks tired too, but Meeks looks exceptionally tired. Wow. Okay. So there's round number one in the books here. We have Meeks winning the fight. That was sort of what we saw coming pre-fight. But I'm not gonna lie to you. Big concerns there at the end of round number one. Big concerns. I thought he won the round, but man, man oof. the end of the first round was uh, was not per te. It was not per te. Uh, what do you guys think there? <laughs> what do you guys think? End of round one. What do you guys see? Man, so end of round one. Oof, interesting. So we're going into round two. That that's for sure. We're going into round number two. We do that. We know that for sure. So Meeks had a lot of riding time in that first round. I thought he gave Sutherland a hard time on the ground, but on the feet, man, Meeks just didn't look great. Took some knees. Looked very fatigued. You know, I mean, this is gonna come down to cardio. Plain and simple. Cardio's gonna win the day. Let's watch these fights here. But Cardio's gonna win the day here. And if Meeks comes out looking like that for half of this round. He in trouble. And if he gets taken down by Sutherland with that kind of cardio, he's in big, big trouble. So I, I hope his corner knows how to 
get him back focused here and get things back in line. I mean, I don't know what they could do, give him an IV over there, but he just looked tired. So we come out here with both guys standing at a distance. And for Meeks, to be quite honest with you, if I'm his corner, do this for a good two, three minutes, dude. Try to recover, man. Try to fully recover. Because I feel like he just got himself exhausted in round number one by the wrestling. And he picked up that big-ass guy like three or four times. So we're still at range. Both guys are just peppering jabs. You know, nothing too effective. It is a southpaw versus an orthodox fighter. So with Sutherland, he is the orthodox fighter. And Meeks is the southpaw. Sutherland just threw like a few lower leg kicks. Nothing too crazy. And you got Meeks kind of coming forward a little bit. Nah, he doesn't want none. Like, Meeks comes forward, then he backs up and, like, drops his hands. He's tired. Man, this fight is going to be uh, it's going to be a hot mess on the scorecards if it gets to that point, especially the second round. This second round is, is hot garbage. Well, I give it to Sullivan for right now. He threw a few hard kicks and punches, didn't do much with it. Now, notably, for oh, Meeks got hurt. Meeks is hurt. Meeks is about to get knocked out. Sullivan's going to win the fight. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. Meeks ate in the knee from Sutherland, and that was all she wrote. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Yeah, Meeks. Oof. Yikes. Well, we could kind of see it coming there. At the end of round number one, it was not looking good. It was no bueno. Yeah, you could see it coming on the pipe. And then there she was. So for those who mentioned earlier about the line movement, yeah, the line movement went in favor of Sutherland and why, you know? I mean, let's be honest. If Meeks had cardio, he's able to take down Sutherland in round two and do something with it. Instead, he blew his wad in round number one, had absolutely no cardio at the end of round number one. Then round two comes out, got hit, kind of folded, and... Aladdin, no bueno, no bueno. So our first fight of the night, we had predicted incorrectly. We had Mr. Meeks winning the fight to the distance. Instead, he comes out and just puts on a poor showing from a cardio standpoint and gets himself worked. He gets worked. For Sutherland, good, good job. Good job. He lost last year in the PFL. So now bouncing back and getting a win here in this fight and getting a finish. Right, a finish. That's a big deal because let's be honest here, finishing is the game, right? When he finishes, what were the betting implications for us? We didn't have any bets here. So we had Meeks to win in one parlay for a quarter unit. That parlay is out the window. Damn you, Meeks. Damn you, Meeks. No, it's okay. It is what it is. Uh, you know. Yeah, dude. Meeks, Meeks literally blew his wad. And what's interesting about it was he was blowing his wad as we were as we were watching him blow his wad. We were like, dude, stop picking up that big ass dude. You already got a takedown. Relax. He got so tired he couldn't even block a knee. Took a knee to the forehead in round number two. Aladdin. So yeah, not not a good look there. And for Meeks, quite frankly. Yeah, the, the cardio, man, the cardio. The car cardio and cardio management. It's like two different things. It's the ability to have good endurance, right? That's that's one thing, right? So have good endurance, that's one factor. Second factor is okay, uh manage your cardio. Meaning, you know, understand your weaknesses, understand where you're better or worse at. And, and don't go out there and, and try to pick up a guy who's much heavier than you more than you have to. Maybe kick a leg out, look for a leg sweep, do different things to get yourself in a situation where you could actually get him down without picking this man up. And he did it too many times, got really tired. You saw at the end of round one, he was like falling down and stuff. It looked really sloppy. And quite frankly, Louis Sutherland didn't look great either, but he looked just enough better. So Sutherland is now in the in the runnings for the contract tonight. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a secret, though. There's no way in hell the PFL is giving a contract tonight to Louis Sutherland. Okay? Don't get it twisted. Every fight from here on out can end in a draw, and they still give the contract to Louis Sutherland. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> and yeah, Gilbert, I agree with you. The, the, the like, taking a shot to the head and then being like, ooh, 
ooh, ooh, that kind of hurt. Hold on, hold on. I, I need to, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was no bueno. But good for Sutherland. Good for Sutherland, man. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I came in here, boss, got her done. Mr. Louie, he landed 29 total strikes, 10 arm strikes, 12 leg strikes. Wow, they have Cajunomics counting arm strikes. Interesting. So when you punch someone on the arm, that counts? Interesting. Yeah, Meeks is just, oh, my goodness. Dude, you got so tired. They're playing the replay right now of Meeks, and he just, it's it's weird because he's the guy, right, who has the physique, right? He's got the physique. He's got the, you know, he looks like he's running a few miles, right? No, nah, no, nah, just absolutely terrible shape, terrible cardio. <laughs> and for Louis Sullivan, he's like, look, I survived all that initial nonsense. He looked a little tired, too. But at least he threw with some intention and some heat, and he just had a little more than the gas tank. He's also the more natural heavyweight, let's be honest with you, right? Meeks probably should be fine. And Meeks was the smallest guy who weighed in. You don't want to be weigh-in slaves, right? Weigh-in stuff can throw people off all the time. You don't want to do that. But, but, the reality is that Meeks did weigh in as the lightest heavyweight. He looks like he's in great shape. He's not, though. He's not. Looks are deceiving. He came in here and, and shat the bed from a cardio perspective. He won round one. Matter of fact, halfway through round one, if you had a live line there, it was crazy in favor of, of Meeks. But we were talking about it live. We were like, listen, uh -uh. no bueno. <laughs> no bueno. All right, post-fight interview now. They're doing an the interview with Louis Sullivan. Now's a good time to get a beverage, a drink, a snack, maybe some crackers and cheese and some wine. That's what I should have. If you've never had, for the people out there of age, if you've never had a nice bit of cheese, Cracker with some wine. Mm -mm -mm. Another one is the wine with um, with grapes. Like obviously grapes are in wine, right? But I'm talking like grapes and wine. I'm going to back out for a second, guys. I'll be right back with you. I'm not going anywhere, but I'm just going to back out for one second. Enjoy the stream here. I'll be right back. All righty, I'm back, boys and girls. We're watching the 
live coverage here of PFL Challenger Series week number three. Just to make sure I'm complying with all of the YouTube policies and procedures here. This content belongs to PFL, Mixed Martial Arts, the Professional Fighters League, and it's being broadcast on FUBUSportsNetwork.com. I've posted that link down here below. If you're watching here on YouTube, you can now go to that link and watch this entire stream if you want to. You don't have to stay here with us. This is a free live watch party. We're not monetizing this video in any way, shape, or form. We're not taking any donations. We're not collecting any money. It's just a free watch party for everyone to enjoy. And so just making sure we let everyone know if you want to go and watch this also live at FUBUSportsNetwork.com. That's F-U-B-O SportsNetwork.com. All right. So back to the action. One fight is down. All right. One fight's down. And Mr. Sutherland got the got her done. Got her done. Proved us wrong. Got to look at my notes here on this fight. You know, sometimes you can be wrong and right at the same time. Does that make any sense? Sometimes you can have a prediction that's completely within the realm of accuracy, and then the shit happens. And yeah, harkening back to what Gilbert said, like, you know, I got hit like one strike, and he was like, no mas. <laughs> No mass, you know? No cojones. For those who are old school, you remember Roberto Roberto Duran, right? No mass. You don't want to fight no more. Not good look. And that fight, I'm looking at my notes here for that fight. We liked Alton Meeks by first round ground and pound. That was our prediction. How about them apples? So he got the first round groundage. He got the ground control for a good part. But also one of our notes on him was that he was undersized for a heavyweight, and he was definitely very undersized. Yeah. Meeks also fought on Contender Series, by the way. That's important to mention. He did fight a Contender Series. 2019, he lost to DeCastro. Yeah, that's it, dude. You got a chance on Contender Series. You got a chance on Challenger Series. You know, I did speak to Meeks over the last few days via some text correspondence, and I asked him if he would be willing to come on to you know on the show and you know just talk shop a little bit. When this kind of things happens and the, and the fighter loses, what I typically will do is I'll give them you know some space and some time because it's just natural they don't want to get on a show and talk about what's going on. In his case, you know, we'll send him a message at some point tonight just telling him, hey, dude, you know, like a positive message. You did good in the first round. You had things going your way. Seemed to be like a cardio issue. And usually what ends up happening is I'll find out there was a reason for it. You know, one of the big reasons why I like interviewing athletes is not just because I enjoy talking to them. That that is that that is cool. The conversations are nice. And for those that are live here right now, 15 of you, if you weren't here earlier, we had Sam Alvey here to open the show. Smiling Sam Alvey from the UFC. We opened with him. We were just talking about what's going on with him and fighting whatever else, his family, the whole nine. So you can rewind and check that out later on. And we do have another fighter who's supposed to join us tonight at some point as part of our live watch party. I don't want to name drop because if they've been here, then I'm going to, right? <laughs> so, um, but at some point here, we will possibly have another fighter. So now we're going to refer Abraham Babley versus Hassan Graham. And Mr. Babley is from England. From England. He doesn't very much heavy accent, but... Uh, he is from England, and uh, he has won already the PFL. That was one of the big things with him. So he's got some experience in the PFL already. And he's a bit of a, I don't know, like he drags on you. like He holds you, grapples you, leans on you. It's not very sexy, but he gets the job done. Well, let me rephrase that. It gets the win. In this case, it may not get the actual contract, right? That's true. Is it contract worthy? You know what I mean? So just uh, checking some notes here on these two fighters here and also just making sure I am 
touching base with my other potential guests tonight. All right, so Abraham Babley coming in. That's a big favorite, like minus 400 versus Hassan Graham at plus 330. Graham's a former multi-sport athlete, played some college football, athletic background, you know what I mean? Played linebacker. If you know anything about football, that's not offensive line, defensive line. It tends to be more of an agile position, but he's a big guy now. In his pre-fight interviews, they had him talking with his dad, and his dad's a massive man too. So he got big boy jeans, you know? He got big boy jeans. Now, I would say this, though, and I'm just, again, talking from perspective here. I think, again, based upon his physique and whatnot, he probably could he probably could make light heavyweight, dude. You know, he's got a lot of extra nuggets there. You know what I'm saying? But at 1-0, he comes in as a big underdog. Do we have any juice here? Let me look at my, my tip sheet here. Do I need juice? We do. We got Graham with a fight at plus 280 at plus plus 280 for a quarter unit to win 0.70 units. So after Mr. Meeks just dropped the ball for us, we need the underdog here to pull through. Let's go, Graham. As for Babley, here's the thing. You know, he he's a control fighter. He controls position. He's 5'10". He's stocky but strong. Not stocky and like fat. Stocky and strong. You want to think at 5'10 that you can make the light heavyweight division, right? I mean, we've got guys that are six foot two, six foot three that fight like welterweight. You see what I'm saying? So imagine light heavyweight. No, he's fighting heavyweight at 5'10. It's like the future is limited. And I'm gonna say it right now because I'm gonna I'm gonna proclock him. I'm gonna not procrastinate, that's the wrong word. Make a proclamation. He does not get a contract tonight. No way whatsoever. Because for the PFL to sign him, they would take a guy who's ultimately a light heavyweight, throw him into the heavyweight division. He would just be completely lamb to slaughter, have no chance of selling any tickets. No one knows him. On and on and on, right? No one gets a contract tonight. No way. So fight starting right now. Both guys are in an orthodox position. And Babley with the nice lower leg kick to start off. That's right. He does have a good lower leg kick. I, I gotta rem- I kind of just like refresh on that. He will kick the hell out of your front lead leg. And for Graham, you know, I mean, listen, dude, don't judge a book by its cover. But Graham looks very like, you know, like your uncle who's cooking, you know, barbecue ribs and you know, having a good time, having a beer. That's the physique and the and the and the sort of oh boy. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll stop talking. So Babley comes in, wrestles down Graham to the ground with ease, and now is just on top of Graham. And this will probably be the entire first round, right? I'm, I'm, I'm. This is, this is gonna e- is easy prediction here. First round is gonna be Babley just hanging on to Graham, and then Graham realizing, you know what, dude? If if I don't get off the ground, that I have no chance in this fight. Now Graham's defense, he actually got back to the feet pretty quickly. And, of course, Babley's just trying to get the fight back to the ground again, just working inside, underhooks. What were the weights of these two guys? Let me look at it up here quick. Weights were, were interesting for this whole card. No one made 265. Nobody did. They were all under. And Meeks was the lightest one. And Meeks said, that, oh, okay. See, wow. So I'll tell you what about Graham. Graham's uh, – Defensive wrestling is better than I would have expected here. So Babley has now attempted a few takedowns. They're both in the feet against the fence. And I, oh, nice takedown there by Babley. Okay, so the issue will become for Graham now. He's defended some of the takedowns. He got back to the feet, but now they're on the ground. The issue becomes now, will he be able to keep defending at this rate as he fatigues, right? You know, that's... That's a good question. We're gonna see now. Oh wow! So Babley, oh no, Babley's on the back of of Graham, like fully on the back, like complete back control. Hooks are in. Graham looks, you know, balling up, not looking great, defending, but you know, not great. Basically, now he gave up his back fully. He's he's now about to get fully mounted. Got a weird arm arm situation there. I don't. He should let it go. 
Babley is fully mounted. Babley is now hammering strikes down and giving everybody his best version of why he should contract, right? So we've got two minutes and 15 seconds to go here. Babley is fully on top, reading down elbows, some strikes. Graham did a good job of trying to lock up, pull him down on top of him. I'm sorry my dog is barking behind me. But, uh, wow, we're seeing now complete domination here by Babley. He is on top. He's fully mounted. And even though he's maybe the smaller guy and maybe even lighter guy, he's fully mounted. And that's just, you know, for Graham, Graham is on his back trying to get out from under. Can't really do much. You know, he's pulling down. He's pulling Babley on top of him. But now, now we got some space again. Now, grab, you know, Babley goes and drops a few hard strikes. Graham is, you know, kind of like defending, but it's not great. Matter of fact, any moment could get stopped here. Babley is raining down strikes, and Graham is like not responding. He is responding actually. Just he's just not landing much. And then you know, with with Graham, he's he's got control. Oh boy, here it comes. Here it comes. Graham is just not. Graham is okay. Graham went. Graham went face down. I'm surprised the fight is still going. This is interesting. Yeah, now Graham is done. Graham just covered up. That was it. That was it. Wow, Babley with the finish. And Graham just got knuckled up. Wow. I'm going to tell you what now. I'm going I'm to tell you what. As I say, I'm going to tell you what. So, Babley, the different thing I saw from him in that fight was, because he usually doesn't finish fights, was he dominated position, took over, wore down his opponent, and, and, and left this man with knots in his face. My man's got knots on his on his face. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean listen, Gilbert, I I was I had Graham as a play, so I ain't gonna lie to you. I had Graham as a play. I had you know 25 bucks on him. Whatever. Underdogs win. But in that fight right, right there, Babley dominates the actual fight. Wow. Good for Babley. We thought we thought he would win the fight by decision. That was our pick to win. But he comes out there and gets the fight done by just obliterating this guy on the ground. Wow. Interesting. Didn't see that coming at all. Very surprised. Very, very surprised. Also, that Hassan was not capable of doing a better job defending the, you know, the, the wrestling attempts. Right. Again, for those coming through right now, you can watch this live stream of the PFL Challenger Series on Fubu Sports Network dot com. It's available at fubo sports network dot com. That's what we're streaming for you guys right now here live during this stream. We don't own this content. It all belongs to the PFL and also FUBUSportsNetwork.com is their main broadcasting partner. It is free. You can watch it free on their website. We can stay here and watch it with me. Stay here with us. Talk about the fights. Leave some comments. Get some feedback. But that's you can watch this right now free if you want to on your own. So Gilbert Garcia, my man Garcia, he writes in, these guys shouldn't be fighting. Well, <laughs> that's why you should subscribe to our newsletter, right? Subscribe to our newsletter. You get full card breakdowns, full content on all the fights for PFL, UFC, Bellator. Full breakdown, nice and to the detail, stats, the whole nine. Sent to you via email, right to your inbox, via Substack. Great newsletter format. Links down below. So we talked about that in the pre-fight breakdowns that these are all undersized heavyweights. PFL is... Look, I've already talked to a few fighters who missed prior fights who are late replacements, and it was just like coming down to... It was just too too close to the fight and travel arrangements weren't made and, and, and visas and whatever else. So I'll put it to you this way. I like the PFL but they're still going through some of their growing pains, put it that way. They're still going through it. And with the Challenger Series, they're especially kind of going through it. 
You know what I mean? Like they're 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 kind of going through learning this, the cycle, the, the the process. Foreign fighters, it, it's hard to get them here in 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 a short period of time. There's visa things. There's there's challenges there, and so yeah. Gilbert, you said you're oh two so far. We need to win. What do you mean going to? We're not going to. We had we had Babley to win, right? And then we had Meeks to win. So we're one and one. Unless you had uh, unless you had uh, Graham to win. I wanted Graham to win. I had. Well, let me rephrase that. I did have a bet on Graham. Yes, but I also had a bet on Babley to win as part of a parlay. So we have a parlay here with. Babby to win. He won. Bukakis fight tomorrow. No distance. And Clayton Rodriguez to win. That's one parlay. For for tonight, Babby won. That's over with. We got that part done. What we have left here is Marquez to win at minus 425. That's part of a parlay for tomorrow where Yair wins the fight and Tafa fight no distance. So the one parlay we had that fell apart was Marquez to win, Babby to win, and Meeks to win because Meeks obviously lost. We also had Graham to win outright at quarter unit to win 0.70 units at plus 280. He lost. So what we've got left for tonight is Hilton to win outright at plus 325, and then Marquez to win as part of the parlay that's combined with tomorrow. So, yeah, not much invested for tonight, guys. For those who follow us on our newsletter, you know we're just we're playing a light with PFL. I, I feel like with PFL, it's you know, you gotta be careful, man. PF, PFL gonna PFL you. They gonna PFL you. Okay, so Gilbert, you have Meeks and Graham, but here's my thing on that dude. That's not a bad situation to be on. If you watch PFL long enough, you know they have a ton of underdogs that win. So I like Graham there. Um, you're not gonna convince me that Meeks didn't dominate the first half of the first round. Like he, everything looked good, right? Motherfucker just ran out of gas. <laughs> Motherfucker just ran out of gas. Like, you know, cardio, cardio is a bitch. You know, cardio is a bitch. And uh, some guys just don't, they don't have it. Yeah. 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 No, it's all good, Gilbert. I got you, dude. So right now they're on the show. They're, they're talking feedback. They're, you know, they're giving their, 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 you know, how, my man, Dabbly. After each fight, the celebrity panel gives like feedback on, on each fighter, the fighter stays back on, and hears the feedback. And it's like sort of like a report card on how you did. Like, oh, you did this good, you did that good. Um, I think a lot of it's a little bit cheesy. <laughs> it's a little bit cheesy. I feel like the challenge. Challenger series thirsty at times. They're they're trying to just do, do a. They're just trying to create two minutes. Now, moving forward, I said earlier that Babby didn't have a big accent. I just heard him talk right now. He's got more of that, the English the English accent. I can't even. I try to. I try to just do it. I did, I just. But yeah, he's got the the. Um, the same accent as uh, Edwards, right? The one who beat uh, Kamar Usman. What's Edwards' first name? Oh my gosh, can't even remember. We got a nice, beautiful English accent, like "Hello, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, Timmy." <laughs> He's got that kind of accent. Yeah. So right now, Frank Mir is giving the breakdown and telling him, like, "You did a great job, well-rounded, very good job." So Abraham is also undefeated. Man, dude, dude, he Okay, so now they have a fan vote going already here. Who should win PFL contract scan vote to be determined fighter one or fighter two? And they have like a scan thing here. I'm calling full on question marks all over this stuff. I don't know if they're actually doing this for real or is it just a gimmick? The, the fan vote stuff. I'm really curious about it. I just, I got reason to believe that it may not be actually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I got questions. All right. So basically now we are two fights down. With two. 
we had a win in the first fight by Louis Sutherland, who was a slight dog. He opened like a plus 150 underdog, so he comes through big time for the guys who liked him with a round two TKO over Meeks, who just kind of melted under the pressure, right? And then after that, we had Abraham Badley just finished up his fight. He was a minus 340 favorite, big favorite. He gets the win in round one by a ground and pound, looked very dominant. And quite frankly, Hassan Graham looked like he, yeah. He looked like a JV basketball player trying to play, you know, varsity basketball with the big guys and just didn't belong. <laughs> just didn't belong. So, yeah, that was a rough outing for him. I, I don't know what's the future for Graham. He's still very young, but tough start. He also didn't look like he was in the best shape. I thought early on, defended takedowns early on, but then he gassed out, got dominated. So we have two fights left, only four fights in the card for these PFL China Series matchups, only four fights in total. Next up is going to be Vitor Resende versus Isaiah Pinson. Pinson being a replacement, not super late, but let's just say three days, four days, kind of a late replacement. Vitor Resende, who's the big favorite here, is six foot nine. So very curious to see what that looks like out of ATT, excellent gym. So you do like that. You do like the fact he's coming out of an excellent gym, good training partners, but also been out of the octagon for a while, long layoff. Uh, some question marks here. What's our action in this fight? Do we have any action here? We have no direct action on the money line here, and we have no parlays here. This is one of the fights, yeah, we, we will also, number one, there was late lines on this fight, right? It was a labor placement, so you couldn't get normal line. For joining us again, you can watch all the fights that we're watching right here in this stream on FUBUSportsNetwork.com. We're just streaming what they're showing. It's a free stream. It's uh, available wherever you have internet connection, right? FUBUSportsNetwork.com. You can stay with us here, which I appreciate. Stay with us. Keep us going here. Leave some comments. But this is not being a monetized video. All the content you see here is from FUBUSportsNetwork.com and also through the PFL MMA promotion. This is not our content. We are not monetizing this video. We are not taking donations at this time. We're just having a live watch party with you guys and talking PFL mixed martial arts. So two fights down. We have two fights to go. And uh, the question will start to arise at some point soon. Who gets the contract? Because we've now had two finishes. That's That's the good news. For PFL's sake, I think the bad news is these two guys are not on the radar. <laughs> I, I, I've I been doubling down on this, but I'm, I think I got what they're doing. And these guys are not getting a contract. Those, those first two guys, thank you, but no thank you. Now, if you're Ray Suffo and these guys, you're just like, listen, can we just make sure we get a finish by one of these last two fighters that are ones we want? Because otherwise we're going to have to like, pull the same move we did the first two weeks, like give a contract to someone who got a decision win. Yeah. I'm not trying to play a hate, but that was like one week maybe. But first two weeks of Challenger Series, seeing them give out contracts to people that had uh, – Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense. All right, so Vitor Resende from Brazil versus Isaiah Pinson, the American fighter. I like how they put heavyweight 265 on the screen here. This is heavyweight 265. Meanwhile, no one's even anywhere near that 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 weight, right? <laughs> yeah, man, dude. It's it's not it's not easy out there. It's hard to find a real heavyweight. People are probably like, oh, no, plenty of people are fat and big. Like, no, but big, can move, agile, conditioning, like a real two, like a real Ninganu. And that, that got me to thinking, like, the UFC could not come to terms with Ninganu, and maybe they couldn't either way because maybe he was asking for too much. And it did feel like at some point with Ninganu that he – he wanted a lot more than what he can get. He he kind of knew that. And so I'll get back to that in a second. So right now we're looking at my man, Pinson, 
I had a chance to talk to him a little bit via the messenger system that we use. And he was very confident. He's 6'4". He's undefeated at 1-0. He seems like he's got a little bit of swagger about him, right? But uh, I wished him luck. Just about two, three hours ago, we talked. We're not talk. We exchanged messages. And I, I told him, you promise you to come on Sunday on the show if you are, if you win. We do a live show every Sunday night called Midnight MMA for the for the night owls out there who like late night mixed martial arts talking and reviewing the week that was. Join us every Sunday night at midnight Eastern time. We go from midnight to about two o'clock in the morning. We got live guests. And uh, we talk about the whole week that was. We'll review this card in that fight, on that, on that show. We'll also review UFC 284. All right, back to this right here. So now we got Vitor Resende. This guy is 6'9". He's yeah, very tall, very long. Looks like he's in great shape. He weighed in at, oh, let me see. He weighed in at 243. So... Eh, eh, eh. It's not. It's not bad. He's almost about eight pounds heavier than what Pinson weighed in at. And for Pinson, I mentioned earlier, Pinson kind of it didn't look like he was in great shape. Put it that way. All right. So I imagine this is going to be a, a Brazilian or Portuguese person writing in here. He said Bora Vitor. I guess he's saying something that's going to be positive towards Vitor winning. And uh, we'll see here, man. I mean, he's a, he's so tall, dude. Like, he's he's head and shoulders above the octagon. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> hello, hello. What up, what up, Never Hedge? My man. So, yes, I, I'm watching this live right now, dude. You can share this with everyone who moves over in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, Discord. Give them the link. They can watch the fights with us right now live, dude. I appreciate you coming by. So, now since he's in here, that's Never Hedge Media. Run by my man Kyle Miller. If you look down below in our description here, we have a link to his actual stuff and his actual YouTube channel. Dude's awesome. The most incredible thing he does, he runs a bunch of different contests. He has like a Super Bowl contest. He has a survivor pool for mixed martial arts, which is awesome. I've played in it. I keep losing in it, but I've played in it. And uh, he also has breakdowns for fights on Substack. He has a newsletter. Just top to bottom, Kyle Miller is the man. And uh, a guy I do a lot of work with whenever I can work with him because he's just awesome and I appreciate his support. But yeah, check out Kyle Miller over at Never Hedge Media. Again, the link's down below in our description. He has a Twitter handle as well. Good breakdowns, excellent betting spots. And again, his contests are awesome. All his contests are run through like a league safe type of system. So there's no funny business. It's all in the up and up. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, check him out. Kyle Miller never had your media, man. <laughs> Better than the contest crushing tonight, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, what did you have tonight? I got to look at your, 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 uh, uh, you have. I, I didn't look close for winners. Do. I had Meeks in the first fight, so I know I was off on that one, man. It's rough. I'm looking up your um, yours right now. So now we're watching Pinson and Resende. And right now, you know, the one thing about Pinson I do like is he's the one coming forward. I love that. He's the one initiating the action. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I do like that part of what he's doing right now. It's even so far. Too. Normal stream. I, I apologize for this. Okay, I think we're back. Wow, that was tough. We just kind of a bit of a lag there. I apologize, guys, but we're back. 
Um, but yeah, Kyle, let me know what your picks are tonight, dude. Post them in the uh, chat here because you have such good sharp picks. I can't pull them up right now. If I try to pull them up, my computer's like, listen, too much. Yeah, I apologize. Should be better now there. Imanite? Imanite? <laughs> All right, so going through round number one, both guys are orthodox. Nothing amazing has happened. We've had some strikes from a distance. If you were Sende, you'd love this kind of fight at distance, right? No ground game, just kind of chilling at distance. If you're Pinson, you like the fact that you're, wow, nice work by Pinson. Good work. You kind of backed him up there, landed some shots. And with, Resende, you know, he's he looks good. He's in shape, man. He's in shape. He's so tall, too, man. He's six foot. He is so much taller than Pinson, by the way. Oh, there it is right there. Thank you. Thank you. So here's Kyle's pick. See, here's why Kyle's sharp. He had something at plus 125 bet, two units to win 2.5. Marquez plus Babby minus 200, minus 200. Bet for you to win. All right, so so far so good, Kyle. And I think Marquez was that fight, dude. And Babley was dominant, but the play on Sutherland was perfect, dude. I, I had Meeks winning the fight, and so halfway through round number one, Kyle, I was like, "It looks good, man." But as as soon as you saw him trying to pick up Sutherland like too many times and bring it back down, you were like, "I was like, calm down, dude, calm down." And then of course at the end of round one, you saw Meeks was just like falling down. Off balance, no bueno. Again, guys, follow Never Hedge Media, Kyle Miller. Great content, great channel, good newslet, good newsletter over at Substack, and he runs a bunch of awesome content co contests. Excuse me, <laughs> that's the liquor talking. Great contest. By the way, Kyle, if you want to see something from Smiling Sam Alvey, I opened the show with Smiling Sam Alvey tonight. He came through, and we were talking for a little bit. That guy is—he's uh, such a character. Like six kids, man. We we're talking about all that shit. But uh, he's a good dude. He's planning to fight over, I guess, in Russia or some somewhere overseas. You know, fighters in the fight. All right, so round one comes to an end. And I'll tell you what, my first initial reaction is we got ourselves a fight. It's back and forth. Pinson's looking pretty good. You know, I think he's actually... You know, got a good uh, accountability for himself, right? That would be the right way of putting it. So let's see what's going to happen here. I've seen this commercial like 100 times tonight. Like, for all the men out there, if you start going gray, it's okay, dude. Just just go gray. <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> yeah, he came through earlier, dude. You can come rewind it, whatever, check it out. We opened the show together at 8.30 because he had a limited time slot, and I was trying to chase him down, but yeah, he's hilarious, man. He, you know, he's a good dude. He was planning to fight more recently, but had some fights canceled, and he's trying to you know, get back in there. He talked about the PFL a little bit, too. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Gilbert, I hear you, dude. So Gilbert writes in here, Vitor is punching like he's in a dream. I mean, look, I don't have a dog in this fight, right? Because I just don't... I didn't get the action because it was such a late replacement and stuff, right? The lines weren't available to me. I just picked Pinson because he's an underdog, and they tend to win <laughs> in these PFL fights, right? So, Resende, the height is definitely part of the the, the hype with him, right? He's so he's so, so tall, like six nine. Also works out at ATT, you know, but hasn't fought in a year, and you know, very timid here at times, right? You, you see, you see, oh, good take that. Oh, well, I didn't get it though. You see, Pinson initiates the striking scenarios, right? And you like the forward pressure. He kind of catches, I guess, for Sunday on his back foot a little bit. But within the open, it's it's equal. And even Resende, nice combination from Resende. You know, like this round right here, round number two, four minutes to go on round number two, one minute down. Super even, man. Now, for Pinson, there was a mistake. He kind of really wound up for that punch. He threw a big overhand right. He missed, got off balance, and now he got himself kind of pinned up against the fence. But Resende is just so much taller. Like he, 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 There's no way I see Resende making this into a grappling bout. He's trying to grapple now against the cage, but it just seems like that's just not – makes no physical sense. Here we go now, back in the middle of the cage. 
You know what Brissetti needs to do? I'm, I'm going to be an armchair quarterback for a second. He needs to pepper the jab more. Like, just there's just not enough volume on the jab. So, like, he's at the jab range. And, like, he just dove in for a takedown, but that was a tired takedown. Okay, Brissetti's getting tired. Pinson right now is about to cross that threshold of, like, listen, dude, if you can't keep the volume up, oh, Pinson with a nice kick of the lower leg knocks down. Wow. Interesting. He knocked down Resende with a lower leg kick, knocked like hit a few punches, but then said, listen, get back up, walked away. But good moment for Pinson. Looks like Pinson just wants to stand and bang. And for Resende, I think now he's at a point where he's losing a little bit of confidence. He's thinking, you know what? I, this guy is pressuring me. And uh, and he's not respecting any of my power, right? That was such a mistake, though, I feel like, from Pinson. Oh, 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 Resende just eat a big punch from Pinson. Pinson, whoa, Pinson is eating him up a little bit. Whoa, Pinson with a flying knee. Whoa, Pinson. Pinson is just going in right now. Pinson's landing some big shots. Gotta just be careful he doesn't lose his cardio, though, because Resende is still on his feet now. He kind of regathered. Okay, looks like looks like Resende is regathered now, but that was a big shot there from Pinson. And Pinson is slowing down a little bit now because he's so tired. Wow. That was an explosion of energy, dude. Then, dude, Miller, guys, if you if you look some contests, good content, um, great dude, good Twitter handle, and um, yeah, man, he's gonna share in the Discord. I appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. He's also a firefighter, dude. Shout out to the firefighters, right? I love those guys, man. So we're back to this here. A minute and 45 seconds to go in round number two. And we got some bleeding going in the right eye area of Resende. It, to me, this is a it is a close-ish round. But you got this round here to Pinson. Now, total strikes, Pinson 58, 25 for Resende. Wow. That's through two rounds. 58 to 25 is not close. So Pinson as a doggy here is doing the Doggy, doggy stuff, which, yeah, man, that's PFL, guys. You got to take a shot at the dogs because the fight's not over. Not over. But the dogs tend to have a way of just coming through and just shitting all over the party, man. Ooh. Whoa. I don't know how Resende's eating some of these punches. Like, Pinson's hitting him hard. I think what, Resende's got a chin, either that, or or Pinson not, doesn't have any power behind his punches because he's... Yeah, Resende is so tired. He keeps dipping for like a takedown, but doesn't have anything behind it. He just sort of like dips down, like drops a shoulder, and then just like the blood streaming now from the right eye of of uh, Resende and Pinson just moving forward, dropping little hooks, little checks, looking great, man. Pinson, good for you. This was the guy that I mentioned pre-fight that came in looking a little bit soft in the weigh-ins. You know, like Pizza came in looking a little bit chubby, and he ends up coming out here looking like in shape, man. Yeah, that body kick hurt Pinson, and Resende didn't realize it. Whoa, that was weird. I thought Resende hit him. They called a low. Blow. Oh no. Whoa. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow. That was a weird end to round number two. Basically, round number two ends with Resende landing a really nice shot to the liver. No question. It was a good shot, right? And then after landing the shot to the liver, you see Pinson kind of lower his right arm a little bit, right? But Resende doesn't do anything from there. He doesn't like pressure any pace. So it's like, ah. Man, woof. PFL Challenger Series with the heavyweights. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. What are you guys drinking tonight? What are you guys drinking? What are you guys smoking? You know, what's going on here? Yeah, that body kick hurt his ass, Garcia. You could see, you could notice that his 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 arm went right back down, like kind of tight to the side. Like He was trying to hide it, but he wasn't hiding it. So, yeah, man. And there was two of them. 
Very well said there. You're paying attention, Mr. Garcia. You saw that shit. You must have been watching some boxing back in the day. That was very much a boxing thing. Seeing the a reminder, everyone here, you can watch, watch sportsnetwork.com. This is not the content belonging to MMA Fight Club. This content belongs to FUBU Sports Network.com and specifically the PFL. Right now, the judges are stopping the fight for a second. Not judges, the referee to, to get a look at the cut above the right eye of Vitor Belafort. It looks like I'm Vitor Belafort. <laughs> Resende, that is. They determine the fight's okay. Keep going. All right. So here we go. Round number three is started up. Let's up. Ooh. Ooh. So Resende comes out and goes right back to the body kicks. Smart move, right? That was smart. And for Pinson, he's there. He goes now. More pressure for Pinson. Oh, so Pinson lands his own body kick and kind of drops Vitor. Wow. So Resende is like, man, he kicked me too. Just like I kicked his ass. Wow. Pinson. Yo, I'll tell you what. Pinson looks pretty good. In this spot, Pinson looks good. I don't know how good he really is. The body language from Resende is completely changed. He looks awful now. He can't back up enough. He, he, you know, he's turning, holding his head, pulling his hands over his head. Pinson's got the pressure. Pinson's got the pace. Pinson seems like he's got plenty of cardio for this type of battle. And you see Vitor is like, dude, would you please back up? Now, good, now good recovery there from Vitor. He kind of recovers, gets a nice little knee, a little bit of a second win. Vitor keeps diving for takedowns. They're not there, dude. You're just, I mean, if he gets it right now, I guess he got it. Wow, that's a big takedown there from Summer Sunday. Now, Resende is trying to posture up to land some strikes. Curious to see now what happens here. Is Pinson able to, to get out of this? Oh, boy, sloppiness. So it's super sloppy in the ground. Vitor is trying to get now like a side control position. He kind of got it. He got it. Side control now for Vitor on Pinson. Pinson is trying to do something to get out of there, but it's kind of hard. This man's like seven feet tall, laying on him like a gigantic spider. Now, here's the issue. Striking numbers. Pinson has 81 strikes compared to Resende at 40. So if, if you're Resende laying on him, can you win the fight like this, dude? Can Resende win this fight just doing this? You know what I mean? Like, so right now, like you see Resende trying to trying to do whatever he can to keep oh wow, Resende with a huge mistake, and he ends up losing position and falling to his back. And he's like sitting on the ground now. The referee has to tell him to get up. He's exhausted. Wow, Pinson. Pinson is crafty. He is a crafty mofo. I'll tell you that. Yeah, Vitor is exhausted. Now they're now they're both exhausted. That's for sure. They're both exhausted. I don't know why this man Vitor keeps going after takedowns. <laughs> he is seven feet tall, dude. He has at least shot for seven or eight half ass takedowns that just had no business getting a takedown. My man. Ooh, nice kick. That was the shot that, that Resende had in this in this in this fight was kicking that liver because he had that one kick, right? He hurt. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, for Pinson, he needs to be careful now. Pinson hasn't thrown a, a punch in a minute or so. <laughs> he's he's slowed down a lot. They're both very slow. Now, remember, this fight's for a contract. It's round three. There's a minute and a half to go. Without a finish, these guys will, in essence, disqualify themselves from getting a contract tonight. That's my thinking. That will leave Marquez wide open in the last round to get a contract. Hello. What's up, man? Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. What's up, Damon? How are you, buddy? I'm uh, doing good, man. How are you? So I'm uh, um, the shared video because you know what? It's going to end up lagging up our stream a little bit. I don't want that. So, oh, hold on here. 
I don't know. All right, I don't know what happened. There we go. There, it's all right. There we go. We're back. We're back. All right. So, Damon, what's up, man? How are you? I'm uh, doing good, man. Yeah, doing good. How are you guys? I can't complain. I can't complain. We're watching a little bit of PFL tonight, uh, the uh, the heavyweight division. Man, I'm watching. Uh, I'm. I was watching some uh, power slap replay, and I'm just laughing. <laughs> It's like, what the fuck is it? I didn't know. I, I was watching episode one. Like, they were, like, picking the fighters. I'm like, they call Yo, these dude. guys fighters. I see the, ref, <laughs> I see the referees that I that I, that referee my fights. Um, you know, I see Jason Herzog out there, like, yeah. are you going to do a three? Are you going to do a three count? I was, like, I was like, what? And then, like, there's judges. There was a fight that the guys didn't go down. And they had judges. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like. It's crazy. But. Yo, dude, I, I'm glad you brought it up. It's a good topic to talk about because ultimately it, it's, oh, it's funny to me, dude. I've watched, I think, I think I've watched all two or three episodes so far. Yeah. Like when they when they moved into the house, dude, I was bugging out. I'm like, wait yeah. a second. I don't, why do you have to live in a house to slap people? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like, like a boot camp to slap people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, they have coaches. I'm like, wait. <laughs> All right. well, they have drills like to measure like shit. smacking power and it, oh, the whole no. thing is uh yeah i mean i interviewed a fighter recently i'm not going to name the fighter but we talked about the referee aspect like the same referees who referee our fights I are did. doing this and yeah. that i mean that kind of i'm not gonna i'm not gonna assume you feel the same way but it kind of gave them a, a bad feeling in their mouth like why are, why don't the same no, people no you see like okay the reason i started doing this sport is because of force griffin Stephen bonner I see, I see Force Griffin out there catching guys falling down, like with a puzzled look on his face, like, uh, like is this legal? <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it's just crazy, man. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's rough. It's rough. But as for you, sir, um, you plan to fight again in 2023? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm opening a gym right now, so um, I'm doing my, I'm opening another Fortis branch. Uh, so I, I live about I live about 25, 30 miles away from Fortis. And, um, you know, me and Coach Tay have been together since uh, 2013. You know, he's been my coach ever since, like, since I started. And uh, so I've always kind of wanted to open my own place. And um, so I'm opening my old gym in, in Rockwall, uh, Texas. And um, so I'm getting that going right now. And so, you know, no matter what, after that fight, if I would have won or lost, I was still going to open my gym. And, um, you know, just take some time off. So I'm just taking off, like, a, probably, I'll probably take, uh, like, probably three more weeks, maybe a month, and then I'll have everything up and running, and um, then I'll be able to, like, kind of focus on training again. So Okay, so talk more about this, because I know you kind of hit some details there, but give us a whole breakdown. This is a big venture, new gym. Yeah. Give, it, give us the details, where it's going to be at, uh, what yeah. we need to know. Like, if you're selling the gym right now, here's your commercial spot. Go for it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 for sure. You know, I have a – um, I'm the, I'm the middle school coach in Rockwall for, uh, for two different middle schools. And, um, you know, so we train at the high school and then we have the youth program and, um, you know, I help out with everything in Rockwall. And, uh, so Rockwall, Texas is like a suburb of Dallas. It's about 30 miles east of Dallas. And, um, it's where I've lived with my family, you know, since, you know, when I moved to Dallas, I realized the schools weren't the best. So we had to move out, um, you know, move outside of Dallas and, you know, we've been out here for, you know, almost 10 years now. And, um, you know, but I'm opening the gym here because uh, there's just really no kids programs as far as like wrestling and jujitsu and stuff. So, um, you know, I want to get that rolling and get it going and then I'll have, it'll be a full MMA gym. But um, my main focus obviously is going to be wrestling and jujitsu because that's my background. But um, the gym itself is, I'm, I'm leasing a place for three years and then I plan on building something, um, you know, a little bit bigger. So, and what part of Texas is this? Uh, it's uh, it's central, like it's uh, or it's like north north Texas, like it's right by Dallas. Okay. So um, it's miles east of Dallas. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned you yeah. have daughters, right? They play sports, but it, is yeah. it one? Does one of them wrestle, or both of them wrestle? Because one of them is doing some wrestling. Um, yeah. So I I have four daughters, and my oldest uh, my oldest wrestles, and then uh, this year my uh, my two uh like my 11 year old and my eight year old they wanted to start wrestling uh so i kind of let them practice a little bit they had they they went to one tournament and i just don't i i never imagined um you know like with them being girls like 
when I grew up, it was like there was maybe one girl out of like the whole state in Oklahoma yeah. that wrestled. And now, now there's a, there's a uh, ton of them now, right? There's a ton of girls. Yeah. Well, now now USA Wrestling has like taken over the girls program, and uh, honestly, it's like it's so competitive. Like um, the girl wrestlers are just like they're killing it, you know. So um, you know, I just like I wanted to make sure that I was like, hey, because my oldest was like she's been wanting to wrestle since she was like three. And I just keep telling her, no, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. And so <laughs> whenever she was like, she's going into seventh grade, she has the option. She could either play, she could wrestle, play basketball, like whatever she sports she wants. And, um, you know, so she was like, I want to do it. And I'm like, well, if you're going to do it, you're going to go all in and uh, I'm going to coach, you know. And so uh, I'm coaching the middle school team and I just fall in love with wrestling again and fall in love with all these kids, like training them all stuff and just I love their energy and just uh, you know carrying everything through them. It's it's pretty awesome. But um, it's so cool getting to show them stuff and then them go out there and, and wrestle and go through the same things I went through years ago. So it's pretty cool. Well, we live in um, Eastern Pennsylvania, and yeah. my my son's wrestled for years. This is a really really competitive area of the country. Oh yeah. Um. So good wrestling here. My daughter. She wrestled for a little bit when she was younger. Now she's a very competitive basketball player. And so my wife and I, we encourage both of our kids to be involved in sports. You know, it just teaches it teaches yeah. you so much, man. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But but so you have four girls. So you're you're yeah. you're uh you're like Kobe Bryant, like you're you're a a, a girl dad, which is awesome, man. And yeah. uh they're so competitive. That's great. Well, listen, I'm not gonna keep you any longer, Damon. I appreciate you stopping by. I'm gonna keep in touch with you. I do wanna touch base about your gym again. I'll reach out to you because when I get down to Texas. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come by there. Uh, I want to come by the gym. I want to come by yeah. and see your setup and, and promote what you're doing. And I think you have a ton of a ton to offer, dude. When you're done with your 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 uh, fighting days, obviously you have a lot to offer as a mentor, as a coach to a lot of young athletes. You think you still can get something coaching? You think you'll do that? You know, uh, it's crazy is that my, my girls team, we won state this year as a girls team. Uh, so in Texas, you know, we won state in Texas, which is huge. Uh, my boys took fifth. And um, I had four. I had four state champions. Uh, I had six that made it to the finals, and um, you know, one, two kids got second, and the rest won it. And uh, you know, it's just so cool to be a part of it. And uh, you know, I definitely want to coach as much as I can. I don't want to be uh, the the high school and the middle school both were trying to get me to coach, and I'm like, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not taking that pay cut. Of <laughs> <laughs> it sucks, man. But I just can't do it. Um, you know, it's just too much going on. Too busy. Well, it, it's a it's a grind. We we have yeah. um we have a gym here locally where it's a mixed martial arts gym, and the uh, there's a few fighters there. Like Patrick Sabatini fights out of there. He's a really good submission fighter. Oh, um, yeah. oh you fought you fought Sabatini. What am I saying? I just fought, yeah, you, you just not you knocked him out last year. Oh, what am I saying? Okay, so yeah. wait. All right, so small small uh, long, whatever. Long story short, he trains at MPR Endurance, which is right here in Northeast Philadelphia, yeah. not too far from me, and good dude the, the owner of the gym's an awesome guy too but they have a really amazing boys wrestling program yeah and um i don't know if you want to do that in the future but like they have a i mean all the local high schools have good wrestling too but yeah. they have a private club men's wrestling program well actually it's, it's, it's boys and girls and it's awesome dude so like for the ones who want to wrestle year round and compete at like international tournaments or national tournaments you should definitely yeah. do that dude if you don't plan on redoing or doing it you should definitely have a, a, a wrestling program in the gym because it's awesome yeah, no, that that that's that that is my main focus is wrestling, uh, and then the USA program as well. It's it's ran so well. I I, you know, I send a lot of kids to USA, um, just you know competing constantly, like over the summer, uh, even in between season, like over the Christmas breaks and stuff. They have tournaments all the time, so um, it's just extra matches and extra time on the mats. Great, but uh, yeah, for sure. When you're in Texas, let me know. Yeah, man. Well, Damon, thank you for your time, brother. I will reach out to you. Good luck to all of your endeavors. Good luck to the new gym. And uh, we'll be in touch. All right, pal? Yeah, for sure, man. All right. Thank you. All right, Damon. Take care, pal. All right, man. Later. Wow. That was Damon Jackson. The Damon Jackson. And um, yeah, it's you know that guy is a, a wealth of knowledge. I apologize for those who were looking for the rest of the stream here for the... Uh, PFL, I'm going to add that right now. I apologize for the the change. But when you to the party, you let Jackson the party, and you, you talk to Jackson because Damon Jackson. So, new gym down in Texas, new venture opening up like another guest branch of the of the gym he's already part of. That's very cool. He has four daughters, 
and one of them is a nasty ass wrestler. I, I saw some video on her. All right, back to the PFL thing. So my man wins the fight. I, I, I wish I can get action on that fight for him, but I couldn't be because it wasn't available. This is NFL being the PFL. Here's a prime example. Pinson comes in as a replacement. The replacements now are 4-0 and this year on the PFL. 4-0. and Week one, two replacements. You had St. Louis, and you had the guy from, oh, I forgot the gym, over in Vegas. Two replacements, they both won. Second week, you had the Jackie girl come in as one replacement. She won. This week, Ed, uh, this guy Pinson comes in. He wins. I'm going to message Pinson right now and tell him to, to jump in here and talk to us. <laughs> I know it's going to be key, but do it. That was Damon Jackson for those who were just joining us for a little bit. That was Damon Jackson from the UFC giving us some, you know, just feedback, how he's doing, his plans, the whole nine. And uh, yeah, man, Pinson with the win. That is great. I, I not knew this guy was going to win, dude. Congrats. Got to write, write him a nice message here. Congrats. Party. <laughs> Why not, right? Why not, right? I'll send him an awesome invitation, right? You never know. So we talked to Pin Pinson the last few days. Very polite young man. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit type of situation. He came in as the underdog. And comes in here tonight and gets the win. It's a theme in the PFL. Underdogs winning fights. Now, tonight so far, what are our picks? How does it work out? We had Pinson to win. Unfortunately, we had no action on Pinson because we couldn't get action on Pinson. It was too late of a, of a change. So we got left out in the cold. No can do. No bueno, as I say, right? No bueno. So earlier in the show, we had smiling Sam Alvey came through. Mr. Alvey came by. We talked a little bit of business, his plans, and what's upcoming for him. He's a funny character, right? Smiling Sam Alvey. He's always got a smile on his face. Always, you know, <laughs> always in a good mood. Smiling Sam Alvey. And then we had Damon Jackson just came by. Damon Jackson is. You know, a great wealth of knowledge, amazing submission fighter. He talked about his kids. He's you know, coaching middle school wrestling, the whole nine, some state champions. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. We need more Damon Jacksons out there. He's a girl dad, four daughters. Wow, right? So for tonight, we've got Mr. Alton Meeks drops the ball for us in the first fight. Come on, Alton Meeks. Come on, man. Second fight, Abraham Babley gets the win. We we liked him to get the win, but our money was behind Hassan Graham, so we lose money on that. We also had Meeks in a parlay, so we lost money on that. We had a Babley in a parlay, so that kind of eh. This fight here, we had Pitts winning at plus 310, and he won. The problem was we couldn't get no action on it because it just came out too late. We don't. We don't fake the funk on a nasty dunk over here. If, it, if the line comes out too late, we didn't give it to you. We're not going to change it up. We're getting ready for the last fight, which features Ross Hilton, spelled H-Y-L-T-O-N, versus Danilo Marquez. And let me tell you one thing about this Ross Hilton guy. If he scares you a little bit and you look at him, you're like, oh, what is this? What is this man of a man? I, I understand. Yeah, see, he tends to scare everybody. He's got a bit of a unique appearance. He's got the gauge earrings right when they stretch them out and loop things and big eyes and <clears throat> it's got some other stuff in his ears i don't even know what that is yeah well thank you gilbert gilbert did you see both guests you know like 
our channel gets very little love out there, Gilbert. We need more love. We need more visitors, right? We actually we have real fighters coming through here, right? Real bona fide UFC <laughs> former UFC fighters. Like manja, manja, manja. Come through the channel. MA Fight Club. You hear my nice smooth voice talking mixed martial arts, and we actually have real bona fide people coming through who know what they're talking about. All right, back to this right here. So we've got Mr. Marquez from Brazil walking out, looking pretty stoic. I'm going to back out for one second and just take a quick little fumar break. I'm going to back my screen out, but I'll be right back with you. Matter of fact, I'll keep my headphones and I might be able to talk to you guys while this is happening. So. Okay, I'm back, boys and girls. All right, so round one, four minutes to go. Nice takedown there, my man. We're back to the feet. Interesting that Marquez is not listed nearly as tall as Hilton, but yet Hilton doesn't look much taller than him. Interesting, right? Marquez is committed to the takedowns. He's back for a single leg. He's working super hard. Hilton, ooh, got taken down again. He needs to be careful. He needs to be careful here because here, here's the problem. Take it down is one thing. Do you have the cardio to get back up continuously as a heavyweight? Ugh. That becomes a problem. So we're now we're, we're dug in here now. We're, we're dug. In. Oh, so Hilton is against the fence trying to defend another takedown. Marquez is relentless now. Hilton has the more strikes. What abs though? Still. Ooh, Hilton is a beast. He's such a big man. Oh, look at Marquez. Marquez is trying to get the referee to, to, to recognize a... a uh, I don't like fighters who do the, like, look, ref, he hit me in the cup, even though it didn't hurt him, just, like, trying to tell him the whatever, fake foul. Now, Marquez, here's one thing I noticed about Marquez tonight. Even though he didn't look like he was out of shape at the weigh-ins, he looks too heavy tonight. I'm telling you right now. Marquez, who fought at light heavyweight his entire career, simply looks heavy. He looks heavy. He's a guy who's known for having good round ones and round twos, right? He's known for that. But has not been known for having a very good round three. And if he does not step on the gas here early and do something that's going to be special, he's going to fuck around and end up in round three and be in a dogfight. Round one is 
even ish. If you're looking at the striking numbers, it's not even. But you know, by the way, this man is wearing a sweater vest. It, it, it does. Does does Mr. Hilton literally have a human sweater vest on? My man literally has a sweater vest, and when I say sweater vest, like it's the hairs in the back comes across the shoulder. <laughs> Full on sweater vest, dude. It's impressive. He also has the hairstyle or haircut of that. Remember that video game? Is it Mortal Kombat? Oh my goodness! Yeah, that was crazy. I'm surprised. I think when a fighter is on the ground and you're the fighter who's got a chance to be on top of them and you don't take advantage of that, I think it's just, uh, I don't know, wasted wasted opportunity. They're both slowing down a little bit here. With a minute to go in round number one, what you're noticing now is it's becoming one strike every 10, 15 seconds now instead of one strike every five seconds, right? In the case of Marquez, he hasn't thrown a strike in about a minute. <laughs> You know, it's like it's it's really slowing down. And for Marquez, if he can't get a submission, that's his path to victory, then we get into a situation where it's going to be a little problematic. Now, Marquez says he got hit in the cup. Here we go. We're going to go now and evaluate. Marquez is saying it was the third time he hit me in the he's third time he hit me in the nanny. Come on, man. Third time he hit me in the nuts. Let's see if the Okay, that was definitely a nut strike. But it didn't hurt him. Like he, like come on, man. Like come on. He he literally like, come on, stop. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm 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 telling you right now. Watching the fight, just having watched Marquez fight before, he is heavy. And if he does not end this fight in in the next, let's say five minutes, next round or so, I don't know. I imagine I need to look at round number three. It's gonna be bad. So no points were taken. A warning was given. You know, Marquez is 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 you know output right. I'm I'm just gonna get output here. Like just no output. That was a nice kick there from Marquez, but he just nice little kick there from Marquez too. But he kind of kind of sucking win, and <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like Marquez took a few shots, and then he was like, "Let's <laughs> give me more." Okay, all right. Oh, nice little counter there from Marquez. Okay, Marquez jumps on top here with three seconds to go at the end of round one and maybe maybe does enough at the end of round one to maybe win round one. I don't know, man. I don't know. Round one was just... The stats suggest that round one went to uh, Hilton for, for striking, right? Suggest that. But it was such a close round. At the end of round one, you see this guy jump on top and land a few ground strikes and you see that Hilton looks so tired. If you're not watching this live and just listening, let me describe to you that when Hilton is breathing, he's doing this thing with his mouth where he's like, <sighs> and you could you could see he's like breathing hard around his mouthpiece. Like he is trying to get the oxygen into the body. Like even in the corner he's doing it right now. Wow. He's actually doing exactly what I just said. He's like, <sighs> like, you know, I have a slight bit of asthma myself. I'm a late asthma diagnosee, <laughs> but I have a little bit of asthma myself. And I can tell you, that's what it feels like when you're having those little bit of attacks where it's like, you're just trying to get oxygen. And that's what Hilton looks like. Hilton in the Southpaw stands here against Marquez. I mean, if you're Hilton, you, you cannot get taken down. That's, that's, that's number one. Both of them are having you know, a little bit of challenge with fatigue. Like Hilton right now, like he, he's going forward, throwing airstrikes. Nothing is landing, right? Nothing's landing. But he, he's making this this effort and it's doing nothing. And it's just wasting his energy. <coughs> you see Marquez right now is just sitting on... Oh my goodness, here we go. Another Another complaint from Marquez about a low strike. We're, we're, we're taking a break here again. Marquez is taking a knee. He's saying he keeps kicking me low. You know what I mean? He's saying now he hit me one, two, three, four times now low. The referee's taking a point away from Hilton. So, yeah, that'll screw me since I've got Hilton to win. And let's see what the kick looks like. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
it's terrible because Marquez is not even actually hurt. He's just like pretending he's, you know, that's just awful. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you there, Gilbert. I think the ending of the round may have won in round one. Now he's going to win round two. And what's going to happen here? Now, here's now let's fast forward things for a second here. This fight's probably going to just to, that was not a low kick. That was not a low kick. They just they just they just rewind. It was not a low kick. It was not a low kick. Oh my goodness, dude. They just rewinded it. That kick was on the, the bell line. The toes. That was not a low kick. I mean, if you're hill now, you know the deal, dude. He fish. No, don't, 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 dude. He tried to offer his hand to Marquez, and Marquez didn't respond. Dude, kick his ass, dude. Come on, Hilton. You know, if you're if you're coaching Hilton, like, dude, what do you have to lose, man? You already have a point down here. You may have lost round one. Like, just go, go. Wow, that kick from Marquez kind of caught Hilton way off balance. That looked terrible. Hill just has no energy behind his punches. Hill has no power either. Like he, he has the body type. He's big, but there's just nothing behind the punches. You know. Mark has and and end this fight. It's coming. You can sort of just all right. And then if he can end it, which PFL's like yes, we get to give a contract to the guy that we wanted to give a contract. He gets the win. He gets to finish. Hooray, right? That's what they're thinking. Like, we get... Marquez, though, is like so out of shape. Both guys are. And I'm just going to say it out loud. I'm just going to put it out there. This is best of showings for the PFL, right? Right? It's just not the best of showings for the PFL. Because what you end up having having is is you've got these heavyweights that are just out of shape, not 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 in you know technique wise. Not oh, here comes the submission attempt by Marquez. We thought Marquez by submission was the the, the most likely outcome. Marquez is on the back of Hilton, trying to get in a rear naked choke, and it's looking really bad. And Hilton is like not defending well. And he's about to tap, and Marquez is about to get a submission. It's, 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 he got it. Marquez gets a submission, and he probably wins the contract just like that. Wow. We called that one on the button. Marquez by submission. That was the call. Yeah. That was the call, and he came back enough to win the fight. So we went three in our picks. We had Marquez to win, Pinson to win, Abraham Bagley to win, and Meeks to win. Meeks lost. From a betting perspective, we did Hilton. We did bet on him to win. Unfortunately, we didn't get the bet in for Pinson because it wasn't available Ugh, in time. You know what I mean? That's rough. That's rough. Now go to the whole judging shit, guys. I need, I need your feedback here, Gilbert. Yeah, my man's a ginger with a ponytail and a full vest. <laughs> oh, he really could have, dude. He could have been in those like Ninja Turtle movies. You know what I mean? All right, so here's the conversation now, guys. We're going to move over to who gets the contract. Gilbert's coming in with the fact that he thinks that Pinson or Pension, Pension, whatever, Pension, whatever his name is, he should contract, right? Okay. So, so we got Pinson, Danilo, Abraham, and then Louie, right? And Louie got a finish. Abraham finish. Pinson was not a finish, right? It was not a finish. I just want to double check my notes here. I was caught up there. That's when I had Mr. Damon Jackson come through and talk to us for a minute. Let me look here closely. 
Cheers. All right, so no way Pinson gets it because he's a late replacement and decision win. So it happened. This contract goes to Danilo Marquez. There's just no question about it. It's more because of the pedigree. Marquez has the PFL experience. I'm sorry, has the UFC experience, right? And they main evented him. You know, it's it's yeah, it's a no brainer. And quite frankly, based upon today, you can see that that was going to be the direct. Those that are here as part of our subsect letter or subscribers who know us and fill our bet for our full bet description. I'm going to review that right after they decide. Actually, we're doing right now. Okay, we got some time. Let's review our tip sheet real quick on the Challenger series. Number three, how do we do? We didn't have a lot on the line because we didn't feel comfortable about many of the spots, and there was some late replacements, and you know you get the drill. But let's evaluate it now, Gilbert. When you say he just didn't look that good, who are you talking about that didn't look that good? You mean you mean uh, Marquez? Because I agree, Marquez didn't look good, but. You know, the finish is a finish, and it's like, ugh, you know what I mean? Once you get a finish, it's is what it is. You know what I'm saying? All right, so our tip sheet for PFL pre PFL number three. Let's look at it right here. We had – so we lost a half a unit in total on Hilton to win and Graham to win. Negativo there, right? Then we had Marquez to win. Babley to win and Meeks to win. That was another quarter unit. That was a fail. We had Marquez to win and Babby to win as part of parlays that include fighters that are fighting tomorrow. So we leave tonight with basically open ended, no final chapter. We are definitely down three quarter units, 75 bucks, because we lost on Hilton and Graham. And it sucks because we would have bet Pence in two if it was available. That may have actually saved us there and made us even. Um, but we also lost the parlay where we had Meeks in there, and that was just a bad read. So we had the parlay with Marquez to win, Babby to win. Both happened. Meeks to win. He lost a quarter unit along with Hilton and Graham to win for two other quarter units. So minus 0.75 or three quarter units right now going into tomorrow. We need Bukakis fight, no distance. Clayton to win for one parlay to win. And Yair Rodriguez to win. And Tafa, no distance in his fight for that probably to win. All right, so now <laughs> the commentator is talking to him, and the commentator starts off with, like, hey, man, I know you're because you took a few little, little blows. Yeah. Stop. Come on, man. I'm glad Marquez won. I'm happy for Marquez, but you know, he's uh, he's <laughs> he's oh, so wait, they said that he actually put this guy to sleep. So now, here's the feedback from the panel. I want to hear this, what they have to say here. Hold on, this is they're probably gonna ask Kurt Angle first what he thought. Yeah, Kurt Angle's a former wrestler. He's like, I love the takedowns. You also could tell that Kurt Angle is like on his cell phone and not even paying attention, by the way. Kurt Angle's not actually in attendance. He's at his home office. And you could see that he's at the put that every now and then he'll look at the camera, but then he'll just act. He also looks like he's a little skeeted out, right? Is it just me? Yeah, definitely, right? Wait, Kurt Angle definitely looks like he's a little skeeted out. Like, he's on that molly or something. 
Yeah, Marquez contract. This one's easy. If you follow the PFL, he's giving them a former UFC fighter. I even suggested in our in our pre-fight breakdown video that when he over to the PFL, they may have given him like a a wink wink agreement. Like, listen, if you come over here, right, and you fight heavyweight, dude, right, we're gonna give you an easy opponent. A guy like this, right? And as long as you just look pretty good, dude, we'll give you the contract. I'm, I'm just saying, like, if Marquez gets a contract, doesn't mean I'm right on my my whole theory. But I'm 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 getting this PFL thing down, you know, as to how this thing works, as to who they want. Like you could tell that Amanda Levi was the one they wanted week number two. They want her so much, they gave her a contract over someone who already had a, a finish, and she got a decision win and a close one at that. And then re, week one, number week number one, same thing. Now, fortunately, we spoke to Thad Jean from week one, who won. We're going to speak also to Michelle Montague next week, who will be joining us for the live watch party for PFL. And Hey, they call a spade a spade. It comes down to marketing. Who's the more marketable person? Who has the better fan following? You're probably wondering, wondering what's on my finger. I I basically was letting my dogs outside, right? I don't know where my dogs are at right now. Usually my dogs come up here at some point to the upstairs studio. But um, I got two dogs, right? And they get really rowdy. And we go running outside. Next thing you know, they start pushing me around. And something happened where I got my nail caught in something. So I had like a little chip nail. And you know we have a chip nail. It's the most annoying thing ever. It catches on everything, right? So anyway, I've got this like really thin paper tape, and I put it on there, and it's that's what's going on here. So. Okay, so now we have all four fighters standing in the octagon with Marquez, the only shirtless of the group, right? So Marquez just finished fighting, so he's like, yeah, dude. The other three guys are there. You got Ray Sefo now about to do a little interview. So here we go. I want to hear what you have to say here. Go, Sefo. He just said, basically, there's only one contract. I wish you guys the best. Interesting. Yep. Now, the first step. Narrowing it down to two finalists. Here we go. It's going to be Marquez and... Babley, maybe, right? I go Marquez and Babley or Marquez and Sutherland, right? There it is. It's gonna be Sutherland and Marquez. So Babley gets the Babley gets the Hucklebuck. Oh Babley. He knows it too. He already knows. And so does so does Pinson. They know already. Like Marquez is getting the second spot here. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. I can't believe it. Wait a second here. Wait, I'm I'm mind blown right now. There, I'm missing something. Something happened here that I'm missing because this is mind blowing. The only fighter with UFC experience with was my man over there. Wow. Okay, so number one, Gilbert, you're right. He Marquez did not look that good, and it cost him. Right? Who would I vote for right now? Let me think. I guess I'm going to go with Sutherland because he's more of the natural heavyweight, right? He's a bigger guy. I mean, Babley is 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 a is probably the better fighter, like pound for pound. But Babley's a light heavyweight, right? Like Sutherland's more of a natural heavyweight. Like, man, if, if Babley were to win, dude, wow. 
that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, if Babley were to win, wow, good for him. I had this all wrong. I was so sure that Marquez would get the contract. After his finish, I was even more sure. So you feel the same way, right, dude? Like, Babby's the better overall fighter, but he's not a natural heavyweight, and we'll we'll have a ton of problems against like real natural heavyweights. Whereas at least with Sutherland, like he's a he's like a Parker Porter, right? That's what Louis Sutherland looks like. He's a Parker Porter. He's a big body. At least he could like you know fill in there. I'll be right back, guys. I'll be right back. I'll keep my my audio. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. These guys are alive still. I'm going to rejoin that. Okay, so we are waiting right now for the results. The final vote here for PFL week number three, the heavyweights. And in a very big surprise, I mean, we're talking huge surprise. Danilo Marquez won his main event fight by submission. I thought we were in finish for him. He's good. He's in. They narrow it down to the last two fighters, and it's not him. It ends up being Babley and Sutherland. If you rewind back in the video, I said those two fighters would definitely not be considered for contract. So I was totally off base. Gilbert Garcia writes in, any heavyweight with takedown defense can wear on Babley. Yeah, very good point. His body style kind of reminds me of Cannoneer, and he's a middleweight now. Yeah, like, wow, good point, right? So, a matter of fact, how tall is Cannoneer? Gilbert, give me that number there, because you're comparing Gabley, or Babley, I'm sorry, I just call him Gabley, Babley to Cannoneer, and the reality is, that's the same exact person. Right? Is that not the same exact person? Ba Babley literally has the same exact body type as Cannoneer. So that's a good example. Like this guy's fighting not one weight class off. He's fighting two weight classes. You know what I'm saying? Out of range. So yeah, that's a that's a I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe they have a ploy to sign the worst heavyweight possible. To feed, you know, they couldn't ch choose Pinson because he won by decision. They couldn't choose Marquez. He's actually got experience. So they decided to take one of these two guys. Yeah, Sutherland's definitely the more natural heavyweight. Look at these two guys sitting next to each other. Like, one's a heavyweight and one, like you said, is a middleweight. So here we go. Now. 
comments here. Rian is going to get the final comments from the judges and the panels. Here we go. Drama. Mir's impressed by both guys. Very neutral. So no, nothing specific, just like, hey, you know. Okay, so there it is. So <laughs> he's even taller than 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 Badly, right? So yeah. So again, very neutral comments by uh, by Vitor. Kurt Angle just said basically it's going to be a tough one to pick. So now they're going to vote. Celebrity vote first. That'll be their pick. Here it comes right now. Oh, wow. So Abraham Babley is the pick by the celebrity judges. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so Babley gets the vote from the judges. They said they want to congratulate him on moving forward, which was interesting because that's weird language since you don't know he will move forward. Almost like they knew it ahead of his time. Kind of weird language, right? Wow, so Babley wins also the the public vote. And that's it. Ray Seffo comes in, hangs this very awkward gold medal around his head, gives him like a t-shirt and a hat. And and very just very awkward. So Babley's now doing the post fight interview and Oh my God. This is just the weird one. Like, Ray Seffo's talking to Sutherland right now. Like, they're just having a conversation. You can see Ray Seffo's like, listen, hey, man, I, you know, I, I want you to stay active. I'm going to call you up. You know, I need you to be available. And, um, wow. Wow. Well, okay. Let me uh, try to uh, put a little bit of a bow tonight's PFL Challenger Series. I think number one, you know, game has to recognize game here. We were way off. We, we thought for sure if if the Mar Marquez got a finish of some kind, contract winner, right? UFC former athlete, and then backing up from there, we thought. Let me look here at my cell sheet before I start talking out of order. Yeah, Badly gets the contract. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Very happy for Mr. Badly. As they say, he he got her done. He was a big favorite, too, against Hassan Graham. But the ground and pound finish, the way he ends the fight, that was the, yeah, that was that's what was impressive. You know what I mean? So first fight in the card, we had Luis Lynn versus Alton Meeks. We liked Alton Meeks to win the fight. Round one, first half of it goes pretty well, and then eh, no cardio. Gets finished in round number two. Takes a few knees too many. Oh, Dean. We money on Alton Meeks in a parlay, so not so good. Then Abraham Babley. We liked him to win the fight, but we had some money on Graham because we thought, you know, big plus money, plus 30, whatever. Babley just crushes Graham, takes him to the ground repeatedly. Eventually, Graham gets tired, and then Graham gets patted out, finished. Fight stop because he, he stops returning fire. He's covered up. But also, when he gets up, it gets knots all over his head, man. Babley did the job. And Babley, of course, won the contract. We like Babley by decision at plus 325. Didn't happen <laughs> because Babley obviously got a KO. All right. Next fight, Isaiah Pinson at plus 310 versus Vitor Resende at minus 410. 
And let me tell you, if we could have bet the fight, we would have. But the line came out late, and we just said, okay, fuck it. It wasn't part of our bet tip sheet, so we couldn't include it. But he won the fight. We saw Pinson winning the fight into the distance at plus 310 or three, plus 340. Didn't happen. He wins the fight either way. And for Vito Resende, he had his moments. Like, he had a few moments there. Like, he kicked Pinson at one point in the side, and Pinson was like, ah. You know, but not a great look. Definitely a loss, right? <laughs> and then last fight, did a little Marquez versus Ross or Ross, or Ross, how you want to pronounce it, Hilton. This fight's confusing because ultimately we end up with this guy, Marquez, winning the fight. Former UFC fighter, so it just seemed like natural that he would definitely get the contract, right? No question. UFC fighter, pedigree, the whole nine. That just seems simple. Am I wrong? So when I saw him win the fight by submission, I thought to myself, he's got it. He's got the bag. They announced the two final fighters to come step out, and it was Sutherland and Babley. It didn't include Marquez, and I thought to myself, wow, I was super shocked. I just went to another octave there with that. Wow. We thought Danilo Marquez by submission at one minus 115 was the logical pick. That was part of our prediction breakdown. So that part works out. He did look like trash, though. We had a a visitor in here, uh, Gilbert Garcia, who mentioned before. He did not look good in that win, meaning he may have won the fight. He may have won the fight, but he lost like the. He may have won the battle, but lost the war type of thing. Like he may have won the fight and got a submission, but everything else in between looked like he was overweight, laboring you know, playing with his food type of thing. And ultimately, the ref, not the referee, but the the judges reflected, not the judges, the voting reflected that. I guess they just didn't fucking did enough. But I'm going to take a step back and say, PFL, wait, 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 wait. Why would, listen, think about this for a second. You, You need the guy who fought in the UFC on your roster just for that reason alone. So you got to finish. I'm, I'm really confused. Now, don't be surprised if you see Marquez pop back up, whether it's, I don't know, somewhere. He just won a fight in the PFL Challenger Series, legit, and got a finish by submission, which is what he's good at. That's worth something. Is he on a short list getting called back up to the UFC? If they need a replacement, is he going to pop up in Bellator? Will he pop back up in PFL this season? Maybe. But that, to me, was the biggest shocker of the night. When they called the, the final two fighters to step forward and Marquez wasn't even included, I was like, <laughs> but if they had to call like Marquez and either guy out with him, I still would have been like shocked if he didn't win. So, yeah, a little bit of a misread there, a little surprise. In terms of our picks tonight, who we had to win, we had Abraham winning as our, our prediction. We had Pinson winning as our prediction. And Pinson, all full disclosure here, no film on him. We had no idea what to expect, but he was an underdog, late replacement. They've all won this year. We picked him. He won. Great. No bet, though, unfortunately. And then we also had Danilo Marquez to win main event, and by submission specifically, he won. So the first fight, though, was where we were off. Alton Meeks, we liked him at minus 165 range. He ends up closing like minus 135, like minus 135, minus 130. So the line moved quite a bit. For good reason, because he lost <laughs> by uh, round two TKO, where he just got exhausted after the first half of round one. Didn't look good. We liked him in the first half of round one. I was like, wow, we're a good start tonight. So we finish off three and one in our picks. And betting wise, we're in the hole now. We need some help now for UFC 284 tomorrow night to uh, get back to even or get some plus money. And specifically, we need like Yair to win, Clayton to win. That kind of thing. But um, in any case, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, watch party for PFL China Series number three. We'll be here next week. We'll do the whole pre-fight show, and uh, we'll roll into the whole live watch party for 
PFL Challenge Series number four. Now, our breakdown for that will be available Sunday. So that'll be not tomorrow, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. Early Sunday morning, that'll come out. The whole video there of the full breakdown, along with our notes, will be available on Monday morning. But thanks for joining us, guys. I appreciate your time, your likes, your subscribes, your support of our channel. And we'll see you guys soon. Deuces.